Hello everyone, happy holidays. It is Christmas time, and this is Parasite Eve. If you don't know Parasite Eve, it's one of the Christmas horror games in existence. It's also an RPG in quite a long run, but it's really fun if you've never actually played it. It is a blast. Uh, it's also a three-hour speedrun, and there's a lot that goes into it. It's pretty fun, so I'll try to explain as much as I can. Hopefully I don't mess up anything, because sometimes that can happen. But I'll try my best to explain this three-hour run, because I'm actually kind of decent in this game. Apparently I put a lot of hours into it. Anyway, first things first, uh, I play on a PSTV. Uh, PSTV and PSP are the fastest. Uh, when I play this, I like to personally be on uh, digital mode, which is meaning I use the D-pad. Some runners use analog sticks if you want to for some parts. I mainly like D-pad, though. I'm a D-pad kind of guy. And you can kind of make that go the way it goes. Also, you may notice this game has multiple discs. It has disc 1 and disc 2, as you can see here. Uh, so you actually get to do disc swapping tech later. Now, depending on how you play this, your game will change. So, if I say you're changing your disc, if you're playing this on console, well, you're getting up and you're putting a disc in there. Uh, most likely, though, if you want to go for record, you're either playing this on PSTV or PSP. Uh, the game is still obtainable on PSN. Uh, the only downside is you will probably need a PS3 and a PlayStation card or funds or something. I don't know exactly how it works, but it's legally obtainable right now. And you can just download it on PSP. I, P I think PSTV. And you can play it on PSP. Um, and those are just faster because of the way they kind of emulate games. And we can go into a large area of PlayStation emulation, but let's talk about that once we actually get into the game. Anyway, 3, 2, 1, let's go, because Parasite Eve is fun. As a general sense, this is a pretty long RPG. What does that mean? It means you can do shit like this, where you can just... You don't have to do anything. You can just sort of chill. This game has a nice ebb and flow, where there's a lot of actual gameplay, and there's a lot of, uh, you can drink from your mug. I have nothing in here, so I'd be faking it. See? There's nothing actually in here. But, as the case. Uh, currently, the record of Parasite Eve is about a 235, I believe. Uh, right now, I have a 241. Uh, a lot of that will come from routing and slight RNG and skill, but it kind of comes as you go. But, l luckily, I do think I'm good enough at this game where I can't explain it. Currently, at the time of making this and the time of saying this, I am currently top 8 in this game. And I am hopefully will continue growing. Um, I am only six minutes off world record in a three-hour run, which my some best as well is under world record, so I feel pretty good on that. But keep in mind, it is a three-hour run. Luckily, though, with runs like this, you do have times where you're just watching a cutscene. Uh, sometimes you'll have to mash buttons, other times you won't. I can let you know when these happen, so if you do, you know. Usually, if you see a cutscene like this, you can't skip it, so you have to watch it. All right, it's time to go into the game. First things first, uh, very minor thing. You don't want to mash incorrectly. Uh, you're going to be mashing the button on text. However, it's not really a fast... I mean, you could mash it if you really want to fast, but I kind of do a gentle tapping sort of like that. Or like that. It's not too bad. But the important thing to note is you'll have a name option, meaning you have to name your character. So once the screen starts fading, you're going to push X, start X. And that lets you do the naming quickly. If you mash there, it'll be Aya with a long A at the end of it. And you don't want that. Alrighty. Now, I know what you're thinking. A lot of weapons in this game, right? What are we going to do? Well, first off, hold down circle to run. Make sure you hold your run button down at all times. Next, we're going to be equipping our first weapon, which is the club. You can do this right now. We're going to be doing this for a few reasons. Uh, most notably, I need ammo for later. So, if I use the gun on everything right now... I won't have the ammo for later. As well, I don't need to waste ammo on fodder enemies. While it is good for bosses, I want to be very specific about my ammo. Um, if you are learning this game for the first time, there is an amazing guide on speedrun.com that kind of, I use this, a lot of runners use this. Um, and also, it just helps if you are forgetting certain things. And you can use directional notes from there. Uh, this guide will literally tell you where to move in every hallway. Uh, this is going to be kind of showcasing some of the finer things and how to do that. I'm not going to tell you how to move in every single hallway, because in all honesty, that is just kind of rehashing it. But yeah, uh, it was made by Primus, uh, Palmer, and a bunch of people in the uh, Parasitive community. So learning this is incredibly simple if you look at this guide. Uh, there's a lot of contributions from many runners, and it's currently up to date. As well, this run will be using a new route called the Hammer Route. Uh, the hammer route is a route that's going to allow us to uh, do quite a lot with the damage instead of kind of fine hits. Also, All Survivors was good. I'm hoping that will be up soon on YouTube, and I like doing that run a lot. I want to do more Dead Rising 2 All Survivors. I really like that run, actually. No, no Rat Pack. Also, that's a snowy snack, sad cat. Also, right now, you kind of, you don't have to actually mash here. 
Uh, this is one of the cutscenes in the game that kind of will play automatically. I don't know why this one does. But it's kind of nice that you don't have to keep mashing buttons for the intro. So it's not bad. So that's going to Rolarius, so pretty good. Ah. Also, aww. No. Class and construction set for Christmas. But if you want to mash, it won't do anything for you. Also, Bori, she's a sad cat. Oh, arrive lever, I see. I see. I see now. But look, he's, he's so sad. Also, people always ask, what's the plot of this game? Just kind of repeat the word mitochondria yourself, and you'll have the general idea. Uh, the plot of this game is that uh, this lady here is activating the mitochondria in people's bodies, and they're combusting into flames. However, your character has a um, strong mitochondria too, so you're not affected by the flames. That's it. Also, Stick, same for the Prime Gaming. Welcome to the Swarm, enjoy the emotes and the scissors, and thank you. Welcome to the community as well. I see you are uh, a bit newer here. But I hope you're having a great day. I hope you're doing well. That's the general idea of how that goes. Alright, so we're about to get to our first boss in a moment. This game actually just throws you into a boss fight, by the way. And you'll kind of see what the club can do. I should mention we're not going to be using the club for the whole run. We'll be using the club for a good amount of the run, though. Not the whole run, just a lot of, you know, mostly the early game. Will we be swapping to a series of guns? And I'll kind of talk more about how these guns work. Because if you ever play this game casually, you might know guns are a bit tricky. All right, now we get back into mashing right here. So, little movement note. Go slightly left right there. If you keep going straight forward, what will happen is you will walk into those chairs. And that would be bad, because you'll get stuck and lose this precious, precious time. That's a welcome, Sticks. There you are. Want to run Parasite Eve 2? I don't want to. If I get paid an exorbitant amount of money, maybe. I don't want to. Also, thank you, Paige. I don't like Parasite Eve 2. I wasn't a huge fan of that one. Alrighty. No, those are midichlorians. You're thinking of that, King Aggie. Alrighty. So, the way the fight's gonna go is you're gonna run into her and slap her repeatedly. You're gonna be going left and right, dodging the beams. Also, Fuzzy, name of the Prime Game for two months. Enjoy the emotes and the decision. Thank you. This is not going to teach you about the battle system. On the top left, you see AT and PE, and HP. AT is how long it takes you to attack. Eat the first hit, that's okay. Afterward, you kinda wanna strafe left and right. This fight can go a variety of ways. So watch, after she uses the beam, I go left, and then I get ready to hit again. Get as many hits as you can, ideally you don't want to die. I got a few crits there, so I probably end up with a good time, as you can see right there. Um, but it all depends on how that goes. Uh, also, Squid Queens, Galarian does, Galarians does the same game mode better, so I wouldn't even say that. I'd be a lot meaner. <laughs> so... Just, uh, like, I'd rather play Galarians. I will play Galarians. But that's how the general fight works. Your AT will be your active timer, which that is how you attack. You want to make sure that fills up. Uh, your, well, PE, we'll learn more about later. That's going to be used primarily for healing us and for some bonuses later. And HP is the most obvious one. Don't die. But that's the first boss. The first boss is very easy. Uh, some people do die in the first boss, and that's okay. But the general idea for that fight is just pay attention to the beam and don't eat too many of them. I do eat a couple early. Uh, the reason why is because, for me, I'd rather get out the speed. I'd rather not die. Or, you know, I'd rather just get a faster fight. I can heal later if I need to. And that's not so bad. By the way, um, your magical ability will always heal you 30. This is your PE. You start off with heal 1. So if you run out of health, you can use heal 1 whenever you are running low. Keep in mind, the more you need to heal, the more time you lose. And in a 3-hour run, it does stack. It's very important to know that this will stack against you. Oh, there you go, Mulkey. Yeah, Wolf did a great run of that. Um, I, I can just never get into Parasitic 2 myself, though. I'm going to focus on Parasitic 1. That's my jam for right now. We're not going to be meeting more of the common enemies. We're going to be starting with something simple. The rat. Enjoy the cool CGI rat time. Yes, it is rat jam time. Exactly, Nickel Canvas. So, the rat's really easy. He'll die in one crit or two regular attacks. So... Unfortunately, with RPGs, the ability to crit is RNG-laden. It is based on randomness and how it goes. Anyway, once you beat the fight, you want to end up on the right side because I'll bring you closer to the exit. Very often, whenever you're doing these fights, you want to be close to the exit. 
Also, whenever you beat common enemies, you will be given items. These items can be good or bad. Certain enemies have more probability to give you worse items, so normally you don't want those items and you can kind of take a chance on it. If you would like to take everything though, just make sure you clear junk out of your inventory when you get it. Those will come up more later as we go. Before we get to the boss coming up, I do need to go into the uh, upcoming rooms. Uh, it's going to be this one and the one on the left. Uh, the boss room will be uh, up above. I do a little right movement there to avoid the left wall. And then I'm just going to be going up to this book. Now, something important that doesn't get talked about often enough, and will save you time save in many different games. I talked about this in Silent Hill recently, in fact. But, what will save time is knowing where you're going. That sounds easy, right? Wrong, sir. Wrong. A wrong general viewer watching this. Wrong. I was trying to do the Willy Wonka reference, because I love Willy Wonka. But, the general idea is once I leave this room, I don't start moving on load-in. I start moving on fade-in. And that make I will move on on load-in, not fade-in. So once you fade in, you see the screen, but you load in slightly earlier. So you can start moving before you actually load in entirely, or before you fade in entirely. So if you know, oh, I have to go up, I will actually start moving forward immediately, and you see I immediately enter the fight. If you wait for the fade in, what's going to happen is you'll be slightly further back. This adds up on every single room in the game. So once again, knowing where to go in any horror game will save you loads of time. Just because loads aren't as uh, simple as you think. Alright, time for our second boss. This will be Eve 2. This fight is actually one of the tougher fights in the game. The reason why is spacing. Um, one, you want to play the safe, especially starting off. She'll have two motions. She'll move, pause, move, pause, and then she'll either try to slap you or do the screen beam. If you have the green beam, it's very simple to dodge that, as you can see there. Um, but if you're too close, what will happen is she'll try to slap you. You don't want to get slapped. Getting slapped is a lot of damage. The green beam, while on the other hand, is very easy to dodge. Keep in mind as well, she will be moving around. Obviously, the more crits you go, that will be better. But we're going to play this very safe and just try to get as many of these green beams as possible. Now, if you are going to be gunning for an amazing time, you will want to stay as close to her as possible, especially while your uh, AT is building up. But just keep in mind the trade-off is she may go for a melee hit while it's happening. Also, her movement pattern is a bit RNG. She'll always be moving to different spots, and you kind of have to predict how she's moving. So that's how that works for there. And she does sound like a banana fairy. I'm glad you noticed not the author. Donkey Kong 64 Banana Fairy. The most important thing to understand, especially when you're starting off, it's okay to do that fight safe. You'll get more runs done if you're not dying to the slaps. Uh, for instance, if she bumps into you, that's like 4 damage, or 5 damage. If she slaps you, that's 18 damage. You have 45 health total. So, 3 hits by a slap, or you can just a few bumps, that's okay. So do understand that. And a lot of this will also come from experience. If you took too much damage here, by the way, what you can do is you can actually heal. Uh, as you can see right there, I'm able to go to my menu very quickly. I go to the PE and I'm able to heal. I didn't take too much damage, but I'm kind of showing you what you can do for safety. As well, once you start entering the underground, we're going to be dealing with a new enemy, which can be quite dangerous, which is frogs. First, we get three rats, though. Um, for this fight, I do like to start on the right rat or the bottom rat, depending on which one doesn't move. Um... Also, enemies in this game very often won't... Oh, wait. Oh, good job. I, I accidentally targeted the wrong one. Like, once they move, they tend to stop moving. So keep that in mind. You don't want to try hitting moving enemies too much. Also, for most of the early game, they're not going to be dropping too much trash. You can just spam pick up on these enemies. Uh, now we're going to be dealing with a slightly tougher enemy. This is going to be the frog. Uh, frogs are rough because they can jump around, which is tricky to hit. And as well, their tongue does a lot of damage. It's actually comparable to Eve 2. So deal with the rats first here, make sure the rats are gone, and avoid the frog's giant tongue. What I like to do is I like to kind of stand by a leg, get on in there, and a way to know that you're going to hit with the club is if you see the bright red circle. Uh, if you see dark red like that, you'll know you miss, but if you see bright red like that, you should get a hit. Uh, frogs, by the way, will die in two, uh, one crit, one normal, or three regular. We're now going to be grabbing this gun because this will be our starter gun. Uh, we're not going to be getting into gun routing. Gun routing is going to be immensely important in this game. Uh, if you know most horror games around the era, you get a gun, it's a gun. Parasite is very different because this game is an RPG. Guns are not quite the way you think they are. You can upgrade guns, you can transfer stats from guns to other guns. Uh, this idea of transferring stats is going to be heavily utilized. Anyway, there's a treasure chest on the right side right here, I'll be grabbing it. You may get an offense 1 or 2. Regardless of what you get, you're now going to be going into this room. 
Uh, what you must grab is the right chest right here. It will give you offense one or two. What I like to grab, because I'm greedy, is this chest. You don't have to grab this. In fact, I recommend you don't, but I do like having range too. Either way, once you open one or both chests, you can now head back here. If it doesn't give you range two, it'll give you a defense upgrade. Both are okay. Don't use defense upgrades right now. What's going to happen is I'm going to align myself with this pillar right here. Uh, I'm now going to heal. I'm going to equip my new gun, and then I'm going to use all the upgrades on the new gun. An important thing to understand is it is the M19. Also, I will now make, make sure it's equipped, make sure you're all good. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run up to this pole, I'm going to mash one, and I'm going to kind of do that movement right there. What can happen is you have the chance to skip this fight. If you can skip this fight, you save time. When you take the fight, it's not the end of the world. You can still continue to run even if you have it. I almost skipped it, which is quite good. If you take the fight, it's just going to kind of change a bit of the XP routing for later. I just killed this one. There we go. So just keep that in mind depending on how you did this. I also kind of talk about the realm of optional fights. Also, if you're wondering why I'm not too worried right now, uh, we're going to be taking this. I get a free level up, and uh, now I'm going to get ready for the next fight. Something important to note as well right now. One, make sure you're healed to mostly full. Next, make sure your ammo is either maxed or minimumed. So six or zero for that gun right there. Now you're wondering, wait, minimum? What are you talking about? Why would I want zero ammo? Great question, nondescript chat. You want zero ammo or max ammo because the way the game works is that if you fire a gun that has zero ammo, it will refill your entire bar. You don't have to go through a reload animation. The game will just give you full ammo. I'm not entirely sure why it does that, but if you go on zero or max, you will have full ammo. So if you have five bullets in your gun right now with the six shot gun, go up to five. If you have one bullet in your gun, go down to zero because you'll end up back at six. So it does loop around and this counts for every gun in the game. Now this gun will fire in burst of three. So you want to have a three numbered gun right. You want to have a three numbered shot right here. It can be any three realistically. Later guns might be a little bit different on how they fire. So keep that in mind. But the general idea is before a boss fight, make sure you are reloaded to full, which is either going down to zero or going up to max. It hasn't yet. Nerf Blade, good to see you. We're now going to be hitting the crocodile fight or the alligator. It's a sewer gator. It's something. I don't know. What animal is this? Crocodile, alligator? I don't know the difference. Sewer gators, I think we meant. Alligator. Either way, we're going to turn them into new shoes. This fight's going to be a bit awkward. Hopefully, I don't mess it up. I really hope I don't mess this up. But this fight's a fun fight. Uh, this is the first major tough boss of the game, I would say. Eve 2 is tough if you're greedy. This boss is earnestly tough. It is a two phase fight. Phase 1 is the hard phase. I'm going to run third birthday. I already have. All right, first, we're going to be running up here. We're going to be waiting a few seconds. Once he moves forward a bit, we're then going to run down and go to the right. He is then going to do a sweeping attack to the left. I'm now going to be shooting his tail. We're going to do this for about three rounds. I'm not going to run down, wait for a bit, and then start running left. I want him to constantly be going the other way. If you mess up, that's okay. Just don't take too much damage. We're going to be shooting three more times and then doing the same general pattern of left to right. The general idea is you want an attack like that where he is going the opposite way. Now, if you get too many crits, that will happen, which is bad. So, too many crits. What happens there, you'll be on wonky ammo routing. So now I'm on a 2 and 5 instead of a 3 and 6. So I'm going to be reloading mid-fight, which is bad luck. So funny enough, getting too many crits in phase 1 is bad. Now for the fire, he usually will spit straight forward. It's an easy attack to dodge. Just stand slightly right of him or slightly left of him and keep firing. Make sure, though, that he will always go for fire. Sometimes what he'll want to do instead is give you a nice little slap. A slap is bad. He might, uh, he gave me fire. That's good. And if you get a slap, you'll have to try dodging. Uh, mostly comes from experience there. Anyway, the fight is now done. Take all the items. And now you have beat day one. That's actually not too bad. So we did it. And yeah. See, that's the funny part. People can't ask me to do uh, meme runs. That doesn't work. <laughs> oh, so I was going to Larry. I hope you're doing good today. I, I can't be asked to do me runs. I've ran Dead Rising 4. I've done the third birthday. This game is awesome. I'm glad you enjoy it, Ofu, okay? I'm glad you enjoy this game. It's a fun one. Have you guys read the book? No. But I would like to someday. Anyway, that was day one. Day one is definitely a day that a lot of people get trapped in. Uh, I definitely recommend, if you are new to Parasite Eve speedrunning, or if you're just, you know, wanting to take a look at this, continue. It's okay to take a bad day one. Day one will not be the end sentence. And take it easy, OG Blaze. It's funny because very often, you know, I'll I have very reset heavy games. Like if you have you ever watched me do Clock Tower, for instance, or even Dead Rising, uh, I reset those all the time, especially really early. As a net Zach. This game, I don't think you should be resetting early. I do not think I'm like even if you're on like, you know, like a really good time, like I still think you shouldn't reset early. There's so much that could happen later. How many of these games are there? 
two, technically three. That's my best. Anyway, also good news for mashers. On this screen, you don't need a mash. It'll play through automatically. So you're good there. Also, I may be losing a bit of time. That is okay. Now, why why may have I why may have I lost time? I missed the frog skip. However, missing frog skips kind of weird because this game does have XP routing, which normally you'll end up about the same time. And I plan on doing a lot more all survivors net Zach. It was fun last night. I plan on doing a lot more of it, and I'll be putting that up on YouTube around uh, hopefully a few days from uh, soon, from right now. So I'm excited. I'm excited to do more of that run. All right, let's go for round two, or day two, I should say. So Parasite Eve is boiled down into six days. Also, whenever you go into this, you can mash X and then just push circle once you go in there. It's slightly faster, or you know, slightly more reliable than having to go down and mash X. Because, you know, you can cancel the menu, or you can just go into the menu and then cancel it out. There's not really a delay, so it's pretty nice. I just mash X and push circle, because then I cancel it. Alrighty, now we are in the police station. So, what Parasite Eve does is it intertwines story and gameplay. So that means after we grab this mod permit, we're going to be having a bit of um, story here. And that story is going to lead us into, uh, like, you know, exploring a bit of the NYPD and doing the tutorial stuff. It's funny that this game throws you into three boss fights before giving you an actual tutorial. It sounds good, Daniel Blade. Enjoy your lurk. Have a good night, Centarius. Sleep well. But what's about to happen is we're going to be getting like two tutorials. We're going to be skipping them. However, this room is extremely important because there's a few things in this room that we do need to do. We're going to be removing inventory and we're also going to be getting items. Now, if you're starting off, I highly recommend going to the top right after all this dialogue. In the top right, there will be a chest and that chest will give you a medicine. I will not be grabbing it for the purposes of this run, but you may grab it. It could be quite helpful, especially if you're starting off. Uh, there's going to be a lot of safety health that I will mention and bring up, and the safety health will be quite good, especially if you're, you know, newer to the run. Because honestly, when I started doing this game, it was heal, heal, heal. I kept going to the menu and healing whenever I could. You use a lot of heals. But yeah, that's just kind of the thing. And yeah, it's kind of neat. But the reason why Parasite Eve exists as a game was because... Um, Square Enix wanted to make a tech demo for their upcoming Final Fantasy VIII engine. So Parasite Eve was the first game to use this engine, and it was something they wanted to try out. Some people knew about the Parasite Eve property, which was originally a book, and they kind of made a sequel-oriented thing, which was this game. And the author actually really liked this game quite a lot. So this is a good example of a tech demo. Anyway, we're going to be deleting this vest, and we're now going to be going to store item. Uh, going to the right will make it slightly faster than going to the left, so use the right side to uh, remove those items. We're removing both of the mandatory keys I grabbed and the mod permits. I do not need the mod permit. Uh, we'll be getting rid of the mod permit every time. I do use haste, yes. And I'll be using haste uh, quite in the mid-game. and I, Actually, I should say the late game. Like, late mid-game. And you'll see when we use it. And yeah, it's kind of neat with a lot of that. Is an SM64 attack demo? I don't know. I don't know much about Mario games, so I can't tell you about that. But the reason why this game is a tech demo is very often what companies will do is they have a grander game in mind. They have something that they want to make. Why not use the mod permits? We don't need them. They take too much time. We don't need to do them. Hey, and there he goes, Schizophrenic Derek. So very often when a game, when a company wants to test out a new engine, they will kind of, you know, make a debut game on that engine, which kind of gives a nice little test for it. A uh, good example of this, obviously, is Parasite Eve right here, but also you have things like PT. Uh, PT wasn't going to be Silent Hills. It was a, it was a tech demo. It was meant to be just a, it's a standalone thing that was meant to lead into Silent Hills as a demo and kind of show off that game's engine. Uh, it's kind of funny as well, because a lot of people think that the Resident Evil engine, like, you know, RE engine, Resident Evil, no, it's something else I don't remember the name of, but, I mean, RE, haha, I get it, but it's not Resident Evil, it's something, it's a weird name, but they use that for Devil May Cry, they've used it for Ghosts and Goblins, um, Reach for the Moon, thank you, uh, yeah, it, it's a weird name for the engine, but it's not Resident Evil, it's Capcom's own engine, and many companies will use tech demos such as this. And uh, this is why Parasite Eve does look a bit better than Final Fantasy VII. It's because this game was using a brand new engine that they made because they wanted Final Fantasy VIII to uh, hit the later gen of the PS1 graphics. But you can see the kind of differences in the models, at least in the base area. 
And also, as a lot of people uh, wonder where does this game kind of take root on its playstyle, uh, the only game that really is similar to this at the time would be a game called The Vagrant Story, which has that same attack battle system. So yeah, like I mentioned, a lot of this is me going the right way. Uh, you're just kind of going through. I'll mention certain things to do in certain rooms as we go, though, because that'll be good to know. I've heard about that. I've never played Vagrant Store myself, but I do know the history of some things. Well, I mean, yeah, this game is quite literally the precursor to Final Fantasy VIII. Like, that is uh, straight up the way it goes. Uh, they made this game because they wanted to have a test run for Final Fantasy VIII's game engine. And as well, they had a kind of, uh, you know, not a low effort project, but they had a project that was like, hey, let's give this a shot. And it ended up working out quite well that way. They didn't have to do a game from the ground. I mean, they made a game from the ground up, but they didn't have to like, you know, it's a licensed game. This is actually a licensed game, believe it or not. A lot of people don't know that. Anyway, you saw the map button there. Uh, very often you're gonna quickly know where to go. This will come over time, but I'm going now to the museum. Uh, the museum is going to be a detour before we go back to the NYPD. Uh, I tend to write these down in my splits. And I want to mention for any new speedrunners, write things down in your splits. It is absolutely big brain 300 IQ to write things down in your splits. Uh, splits. Spritz. Splits. Spritz is like water that clowns use. I'm talking about splits. Uh, writing things down in your splits is big brained move because it will it can vastly help you. Uh, I'm a very, like, you know, I have, like, caveman grunts that tell me what I need to be doing. So later, let's see. Hey, look, Central Park, that's the park. Worms, that's the worms. Eve, that's Eve. Soho, I'm going to Soho. I'm going to museum. I'm going to NYPD. Um, a lot of this helps you remember where I'm going and how that works. So, <laughs> Noct correct, Noctosis. So very often, there's no rules against this. And they help runners out. A lot of early game speedrunning and learning a game is muscle memory. Like, what kind of info? You can write down passwords. Like, there's no rule saying you can't write down a password they have to type in quick. Anyway, after the second dialogue here, uh, that one, you can run to these stairs. Uh, the game will then force you to go over to that uh, little notepad there. Uh, what you can do then is you can just go right here. And hey, go back to the stairs. Oh yeah, I love sub splits. And like, you don't even have to use them. You can skip them. We'll see. To make a new one, they can't make a new one because they don't have the license to make a new one. Rise of app. They're not going to make a new one. They can't make a new one. Unironically, you know what they're more likely to make? Gex, baby! Gex got announced as a licensing thing. They renewed the license to Gex. Gexual content is coming. We don't know what, but they renewed it. Meanwhile, let me explain the story as well, because it happens every single time I play this game. Parasite Eve license is not owned by Square Enix, but they have the license. No, they have the license to re-release content they've made. They don't have a new license. So they can't make any new projects. They can only release Par Parasite Eve 1 and Parasite Eve 2. They have the license to re-release those games as they choose, but they can't remake it. Who owns the license? The author. Because this game is a licensed game based on a book, and the author hates Square Enix. So currently he is not a fan. Why is he not a fan? He hated Parasite Eve 2. This is all factual. Third birthday did not kill the franchise, it pissed on the franchise. They're not making a new Parasite Eve anytime soon. Incorrect, A best. We'll focus on the good stuff. Gex is coming, well maybe. They renew the license. So we don't know what they're doing with Gex, but they have plans for Gex apparently. I don't blame the author, I played Parasite Eve 2. I don't like the, uh, they kind of remove the AT battle system and a lot of the RPG elements. I have a very specific thing where I'm not a fan of games once they try to become Resident Evil. I like a lot of horror games when they're not trying to do something else. Like, Parasite Eve 1's very original in its own right, and I like a lot of the things about this game, which is why I wanted to do this uh, commentary for it. However, uh, Parasite Eve 2, it just, it goes too much into the world of an RE clone to me. And I'm not- I'm just not a huge fan of it. I heard a lot of people like it, and we're proud to you, but... I'm just a leader of that, because I- they'll just get into this giant thing that I'm not gonna have that conversation right now. Instead, we're going back to NYPD. Uh, I'll automatically take you back there, luckily enough. And now, uh, we're gonna be doing a very quick, um, menuing here in a moment. 
and we're also gonna be going into a like we're gonna go to that briefing room once again and then we're gonna be going to the park it'll throw me in the park automatically once i leave the police station after this cutscene so our you know dialogue matching i should say but we're gonna be getting into our first of many weapon upgrades so how do i put this weapon upgrades in this game are weird the reason why they're weird is, well, one, earlier you saw me, I picked up a tool that was the chest underneath the guy with the gun tutorial. I made sure to grab that tool earlier. If you don't remember where it was, rewind the video if you're watching this on YouTube. You can find it when I was talking to the two guys in the gun shop on the basement floor of the police station. So, you need to make sure you grab that tool. Have I tried the medium? More like the minimum. No, I haven't. Now, it's going to be a very specific set of movements. Also, how's it going, Honeymonger? Hope you're having a great day. I'm on PlayStation TV. We're going to be going back to the lobby. You can totally do this whenever you want, but I like to do this in the lobby because it's right before I leave. So check this out. Once I hit roughly about the opening, I go to the menu. I'm going down to the tool button. I'm going to take the M19, go to the M16, give it my stats. M19 is my new weapon. I'll sort my weapons, and I'll delete the mod permit. Now, equip the gun and equip the ammo. I've now equipped everything and we're ready to go. Doing menuing this game can be immensely fast if you know what you're doing. Now, the M16 is overall a much better weapon than the M19. The M19, tiny pistol. M16, big rifle. Good stuff. How's it going? Andrew Lycan? I like one? Angelic Lynn. I'm stupid. Welcome into the stream. Hope you're having a good day. Hope you're having a good day. Angelic Lynn. Welcome, everyone. I am McDysis, I do love horror games, and right now I'm explaining Parasite Eve as much as I can. Welcome, everyone. I was Code Veronica, hope you had fun. I was going Real Playa, Angelic Lynn, Urkamus, Bacon Pancakes. Welcome, everyone. Hope you're all having a great day. I do a lot of horror games here, and I am explaining quite a lot. Also, Urkamus, thank you very much for the gift of sub to Angelic Lynn. And hi, hope those stream went well. How's Code Veronica? Tell me all about it. And hope you all had a good time. And no, remakes are entirely new things. I cannot make remakes. No, we're not talking about that anymore. Just no, we're not doing it. Anyway, once I says I know, you may begin moving again. That's the way I always use it. So she says I know, and now we can begin moving, and we're seeing new enemies. For anyone coming in, I am fully explaining the Paris at Eve run, because I like this game, and I've been doing quite a lot to play it next year. But next year is in like two weeks. So, that sounds good, I hope. Alright, so always loot this. This will either give you ammo or a medicine. I got a medicine, and that's okay. Both of these are good results that you want to have for later. Uh, we're kind of hitting the point where enemies are going to be hurting harder, and that's why we have nicer ammo. So, you have a snake, and you have another snake. Uh, if you level up with the frogs, you'll be strong enough to one-shot uh, you know, one a snake with a crit and a regular hit. Uh, most enemies should die in about two hits. Uh, usually those snakes are pretty good to loot. I don't think that bad. Now, an important thing that I've been learning recently in this run is looting. Looting is very important, because getting greedy can be bad. The more greed you have, the more junk you get. So don't be too greedy, it's tactical greed. And yeah, it's fun, Eva. Also, if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask. How's it going, Realm? I hope you're doing good. And hopefully you had a good stream, Angelic Lynn. Anyone who's not checked them out, go ahead and do so. They're nice people. Alright, so this fight is going to be two birds. Birds are rather easy. Uh, they'll either die, usually, I don't think they'll die from a crit right now, but usually you can just fire one and two. How do you avoid picking up junk? Let me show you, because this fight is going to have junk. Knowing what fights have junk is how you avoid picking up junk. Some fights will give you junk, and the junk is used for the gun. No RNG manip, you just have to kind of give what it gives you. Okay, so I tap X twice, it has junk, I go to end. I do not pick up those items. Birds will have junk very often. Some enemies will have junk more than others. But it's PlayStation TV is the PlayStation Vita, but on a console. It's weird, but it's interesting. Alright, so I'm going to grab that key, and I'm also going to be talking to the top right of the gurney. Uh, from this, I'm going to open this drawer, and that's going to give me another gun. Now, I want to be very particular. The top right of the gurney is where to talk to. You have to, like, face it. It's really awkward. And it's Parasite Eve Zero Dodger. It's in the title. This is a part of a new route called the Hammer Route. What's going to happen in the Hammer Route is I'm going to be maximizing my damage, and I'm going to be attacking much faster. Uh, and you'll see how this goes. This should give me a tool or ammo. If I get a tool, that's good luck. You'll usually get a tool. I know, I, just like, I like doing the deadpan joke, though. It's fun. 
So now that we have the tool, we'll be doing an upgrade later and in one moment after this fight, after two fights. Uh, this fight, the birds will die after two shots. However, the big guy there uh, might be a little bit harder to kill. I got, wow, two crits. To dodge the boomerangs, you just sort of run in. Also, the bird will attack me, that's fine. Let's dodge him. If he melees, you just gotta hope to God it kinda works. He's gonna melee. Then you can kinda tell if they're gonna melee, and then you can sort of dodge it like that. But the general idea is keep your distance on them. Uh, these guys hit really hard, especially early. Alright, we're good. So, this spike can net you uh, certain things like ammo and junk. I don't want the junk, so I'm just gonna take the ammo. Uh, you can actually ignore it if you don't want to. Also, open this chest, it will always have ammo. So, I have taken some damage. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to heal. And I'm also going to take the time to upgrade my gun from the 203 stats to the M16. Do not delete your M16 for the love of God. Also, I can now... Uh, I can't do that yet. Do not delete your M16. Deleting your main weapon will kill your run. Tools and weapon management routing are very important. That is the most important thing not to mess up. When you're starting off, read very carefully from the guide. Yes, I've done it. Uh, it happens to the best of us. You must be very careful when it comes to that. I'm also going to do another menu after this fight, but the thing is, I wouldn't normally have to take it, but I want to play this very safe, because I'd rather not die. Um, you know, a dead run will be less good than a non-dead run. Okay, so what's going to happen right now is, once again, I will be healing. Tell myself off. I'll now level up one damage in the M16. I'll give it one attack point, I'll sort my inventory, and uh, I can reload the gun, and I can throw away some extra items like the junk and the cure P. So, hey, yes, I did get a junk, but again, getting one junk isn't bad. You can actually kind of be careful with the amount of junk that you get. What must happen, though, is you don't want too much junk. It will clog your inventory. And later in the run, too, things like Medicine 1 will be that. So you want to make sure you're very careful of what you grab. Morning, Sir Ace. Hope you're doing good. And I'll even point out some of the safety stuff. Right now, we're doing very good on our damage routing, and currently, I have the good tool. Now, if you do forget the tool, I will tell you what to do and what to grab for the hammer route, but keep in mind, uh, the tool routing is kind of precise. And also, there's bonus things you can do if you get extra tools, so. That's good to know. Thank you for the follow. Also, I can have water now. This is a bit of a chill scene. But yeah, Angelic Lynn, tell me all about how you've been liking Code Veronica if you're still here. Talking like a mile a minute with this game. <laughs> Also, we'll be hitting some harder enemies in a moment and some tough fights, and, you know, some weird fights. Um, we're going to be grabbing something special soon that will help out a lot of runners. Uh, I always recommend grabbing it. Um, it loses a very minimal amount of time and can save your run by a wide margin. Like, it is very impactful to have it. I will also be taking some safety strats in this run because I don't normally take. Hopefully. I like to make sure that I'm going to be very safe throughout the run. Alright, so a little bit of movement in the next room that's kind of silly. Uh, when we go backstage, once you approach Eve, you can go down afterward. You don't have to exit the way you came. You can see it takes me a long time to run to the middle of the stage. So, instead of that, if I just run straight down, I will exit through the same exit faster. Uh, the goo is actually... Let's use the word baby batter. As I think that's more safe for YouTube TOS. <laughs> and I want this video to be on YouTube. So. It's baby batter. Sounds freaky? She is freaky. She's literally guzzling it. Anyway. I mean, that's New Game Plus, but we're not going to do that. Correct, Teddy. You're going to go into this gazebo, and you're going to be going to the right side. This will give you a revive. It's right there. You'll have to feel around for it, but once you get the movement, you'll always be able to get it. Now, a revive means if you die, you won't actually be dead. So that's good. You want these. They're very important to the run. They can save you in the worst of situations. Alright, as well, we're going to be taking the upper path. There used to be two paths now. There's only one with the hammer route. Because the amount of damage that we can potentially get out will be immense. So luckily taking this route will always work for us. How's it going? Is that Shotaro Shu? Welcome to the stream. Hope you're doing good. I'm doing good. 
Alrighty, so this chest right here will have another tool. You can see I'm getting as many tools as I can. So tools in this game are used to upgrade your guns and to transfer things over. So, you'll be destroying one gun, but you can give things to other guns. So, you noticed earlier the M19 went to the M16 and I gave it stats. This is how you upgrade your guns so you don't lose all your upgrades. A lot of people want to notice, it's like, oh hey, new gun, and then they immediately ruin their old gun. Hey, you level up this gun the whole game, and now all your stats are pissed away because you did improper tool management. Tool management is the single most important thing in Parasite Eve, and most casual players in this game struggle with it, which is how you kind of get around beating this game. This game is super easy if you know what tools to use. And recommendation, Siren Blood Curse. Alright, so now at this point, we're actually strong enough where we can one-shot these birds. Uh, always aim at two different birds. Uh, the reason why is, as long as they're close enough, you can one-shot them with the crit. Alright, right now, they're all one hit away. Most likely. There's one. And this one will die. Now, these birds will never drop anything good. Someone asked earlier, how do you avoid picking up junk? Four junks. What happens when I grab four junk? Well, I'd have to get rid of it. Also, if you're ever lower on the health spectrum, make sure you heal. Um, 30 free health is nice if you know how to do the menu. Which the menu is triangle down X. And then you just cancel. And see, nice and easy. We don't get any super tools during the run. I don't know when you get them. I haven't played this game casually in a while. Nope, you all- the revive is just a safety route. It will never be used outside of safety. Uh, ideally, you don't want to use the revive, in fact. So, snakes will do poison, so make sure you don't get hit by them. Dodging is very simple like that. The polar bear lightning, usually the further back you run, the better it will be. Now, to dodge the polar bear in full, I like running to the left of him, because usually he will miss if he does the tackle, and if he swings, you know, he'll probably do lower damage like that. Now, for this last one, we just aim and fire and he'll be dead. Now, an important thing to note is don't be too far away from the screen. Also, the harder the enemies, the better you'll be for uh, resources. You may notice I just mashed pick up there. I knew they would have ammo and better things. Meanwhile, the birds tend to have junk. So, better the enemy, better the loot. For this one, target the bottom one first. Uh, ideally, what you want is a crit and a regular hit. Now, I know you have no bearing on this, but the thing is, you want this one dead second. You always want to kill enemies near where you're going next. So, pay attention to the layout of the land. And you want to go towards the side of the, you know, the exit. So, hey, I beat the enemy at the top. Guess what? I exit on the top. The arena is locked, but you can be on that side. All right, so this is the YOLO tool. I got the YOLO tool. <laughs> okay, you're not going to get a tool there. You may go for it. It'll give you a defense one or a tool. It is a very low chance to give you a tool. And now this run is certified blessed. If you get that tool, I will tell you what to do later. Uh, I'll explain, but that is a very lucky tool. That's all I can tell you. Like, immensely lucky. Uh, this run is actually blessed right now. Alright, so this fight is the last fight before uh, the upcoming boss. Um, once again, the birds can be crit in one shot like that, so always make sure to aim at one bird and aim at something else. I know this bird will die in one hit right now, so if I aim at him and aim at the other thing, I can do this. And now this guy will die in one more shot, because I crit him. And if you wouldn't die in one more shot, well, you'd die in two. Okay, these guys usually drop trash, but I'll take the ammo. Okay, before the boss fight, you can save the game if you're learning. I'm not going to save the game, though, because I don't need to. I'm going to heal the fool, I'm going to make sure my ammo is reloaded to max, and I'm going to make sure I don't have enough experience. Sometimes you might. Uh, sort your stuff, and then go into the fight. And now you're ready. This is going to be called the one to one and I'll explain what it does. If I don't get it, you will have to play around. Every time a worm dies, the other worms gain health. So what we're going to do is we're going to try shooting this one immediately when it comes up. So I shoot it twice. I got two hits. Now, I'm going to be shooting the one in the middle twice as well. He'll try to attack me most likely. I'll get both hits off. Also, if you want to avoid a dodge, you can actually pause the game and pause buffer. That will allow you to dodge. Now, this one will try to attack me as well. He did not, so I'm not going to go for the shot. Uh, we're actually going to wait for him. I probably could have gotten the shot, but now he'll attack me, and now I can shoot him. This worm will now die. Uh, I want the worms to die at certain parts, because that's going to allow me to get the max uh, damage out and all that. Now, I'm going to shoot the middle worm two more times. Wow, I crit him both times. I have to wing it now. Uh, getting too many crits can actually be bad, as you may see there. It's not the end of the world, though, because I'm getting a lot more crits. Uh, the general idea is to make sure you don't get hit on the other side. It's not so bad. Just make sure to equalize your damage between the worms. 
The reason why you want to equalize is because if you don't, you will get a big worm later with a ton of health. So now I've hit this one four times. I'm going to start beating down on this one. And like I mentioned, if you're having trouble dodging, you can pause buffer like that and you can see the rockets and think about where to move next. You are allowed to do this. Nothing wrong with that. I want to wait because I don't think he's dead yet. Remember, you want your damage equalized. Ideally, what you'd want to do is you want to kill the left one and then you want to kill the right. Uh, you want to kill both in one turn. All right, let's see. If he goes for attack, I think I can win this right now. Let's see. All right, that was actually really good. That was better than the one-to-one. -one. I pretty much got a shorthand version of it. The fight can go well, but it will come along in practice. Now, heal to full. I don't care what you need to do. Be full health. Use medicine ones. Have full health. Have full ammo. Be full in everything and level up everything into damage right now. You must do this. It is important. You will lose otherwise. I don't care if you think you'll get away without getting hit. Heal to full. Use medicine ones. Use all your PE. Heal to full and be full ammo. This fight, while not the toughest fight in the game, is very... I was going to go to magic, by the way. It's very... <sighs> you can underestimate it. And I feel like if you don't heal, you will underestimate what can yeah, pretty. I'm doing commentary. It's been very good so far. I got amazing luck. It's been quite good. I see. Yeah, I, I've been enjoying it. I like a lot of horror games. And scaring the most, I'd say probably Alien Isolation. Okay, so this fight has two ways you may deal with it. If you're close, she'll go for a slap. This is faster, but you'll lose more health. And if you want to be slow, if you're further away, she'll throw lightning in the middle, which is safer. Now, for speed reasons, you're going to want to try being close and baiting out smacks. If you're low on health, though, do not bait out smacks. Um, baiting out smack requires you to get in the range of punch, but keep in mind you'll take something like 60 damage. You can end the fight in about three turns if you're doing this right. Uh, I baited out, I baited out some smack there, that's fine. Always go in the opposite corner and you'll always dodge that. She's probably gonna die in two hits. So let's go. Alright, we're gonna bait out the smack. You can dodge a smack like that. And she should be dead in a moment. Once the game freezes, you no longer have movement, you will be good. I'm now good. Day two is now done. You notice there, I got to 38 health. One more smack would have killed me. I had a feeling that would have worked, but again, I healed to full. You must play that safe. Do not play that risky unless you are quite literally in like the top 10, I would say. Unless you know what you're doing, do not mess around with Eve 3. This fight is the most underestimated fight in the game. Every runner will tell you, heal to full. Because the worms are hard. Once you get the hang of them, they definitely get easier, but the worms are hard. But E3 will kind of get you right after the worms, which is bad. Uh, if you're having trouble with E3, save the game. Go back to the back, go back to the phone, save the game. You can do that. There's nothing against the rules. You're allowed to do that if you want to play as truly safe. I'm not going to do it because I don't want to, but you may do it, and you can if you want to. I also want to mention, once again, for the worms, something to keep in mind for the worms. I, I did it well there. I got a bit lucky with my crits. I didn't think I'd get that many good crits, but I did. But the worms, every time you kill a worm and the worms are not, you know, the worms are in the ground, when they come back up, they will get more health. Uh, the exact amount, I'm not entirely sure, but they will get more health. So, the one-to-one -one strategy, which you can find on speedrun.com, it was crafted, I want to say, by Palmer, as on PlayStation Dude. The one-to-one -one abuses the idea that if a worm's above ground, it will have the same amount of health. So the worm can't regain health if you kill it. So very often, that's why you saw me splitting my damage. I had a feeling that I'd probably kill both, and I did kill both. If the worm went back underground, it would have gained health, and that would have required more shots from me. That's why even if you kill something early, as long as you kill the proper things, you can still make it work. And, once again, if it does go wrong, you have a revive. You're allowed to use your medicines in the middle of the fight. Losing time for healing is not the end of the world. You may use it. At this point, it's all just mashing to the end. So if you beat Eve 3, congratulations, you are one-third of the way through the run. Roughly, I'd say. And yeah, Priya, I thought I'd do commentary for this game. It's a fun Christmas treat. Also, I need to crack my back. I need a stretch. Big stretch, chat. Big stretch. <sighs> A uh, plus range. Range stat means that when you are firing a gun, it's going to be more like you can go further out on the span of your range. You are locked into range. Very often you'll see me being in a certain range of enemies. You do not need plus range very often, but it can be just a very minor thing that can really help you. Most runners will not go for this because it's very minor time loss to go for it. However, if you manage to get range, technically you have a very small boost. 
but it's not needed, especially given that most of the time you want to be up and close and personal. It's just one of those things that can help you in the, like, especially a late game. And I'll tell you, uh, mid game, I'll tell you why it will help you. Now, I don't recommend going for it entirely. It's something I personally like to do. It is a flare trick. However, you can go for it if you choose to. Uh, it's one of those games as well that the more you play it casually, you might know more about it. You might know where certain things might be. Uh, lately, um, the route heavily changed thanks to Crazy Awesome. Uh, he is a Parasite Eve runner who uh, I think he currently has world record as the making of this thing, as me talking right now. And he changed the game because he was doing a category that he did called Starter Pistol Percent. And he routed out as many upgrades as he could. And then he routed into the main game. So that can happen sometimes. Also, time to show you the world's greatest traffic cop. Literally stops on a dime. I love him. Also, general rule of thumb. If it's playing an FMV like this, give your hand a break. You'll be good. You don't have to just mindlessly mash. But, also, if you're wondering, will mashing faster make you faster? It kind of. Like, if you button mash like hell, you might save a few seconds. But, honestly, I just, rhythm I just rhythmically tap. Like, I go kind of fast, but I I'm not, like... I'm not going to break my hand for a few seconds. Especially since a lot of the dialogue in this game is kind of weird, because, like, the last sentence will always wait. Like, right now, I can't get more dialogue because there's a cutscene happening. And I have to wait for the next one to come back. Like, it activates certain things, so it's kind of weird. I mean, Turbo can be used for this. I don't know if it's currently allowed for the leaderboard, but, like, I would make arguments for it. Especially with RPGs, it just... Di just dialogue. I, all I'm doing is like this. This is all I do the whole time. I just... That. Which, I, I don't think that's immensely skill-based. Uh, I get tricks that are like... Da -da -da, but you have to mash really fast. I, I can get the argument on that, but... Yeah, I, I'm not gonna mess up my hand for dialogue mashing. <laughs> I'm cool eating minor time loss, and honestly, I'm, I'm not opposed to that. <laughs> And thank you, Hijacker. Yeah, I like talking about a lot of the games I've been doing. And what motivated me to do more Parasite Eve lately was the Twitch recap. Uh, I noticed in the year 2021, apparently I played a lot of Parasite Eve, and I didn't realize it. Um, so I figured I'd do something with all the hours I put in this game. Uh, Parasite Eve is my third most game I've played in the year of 2021. If you're wondering what the top three are, Sound Hill 1, Dead Rising 1, Parasite Eve, and then Haunting Ground. Like, I don't know how much Parasite Eve I played, but apparently that's more than Haunting Ground. Yeah, I played a lot, Priya. I didn't realize I played that much. I played a lot of hours of Parasite Eve, and I guess it shows now, because I'm no longer having struggles that I used to have in this run. Uh, I remember for a while when I was doing Parasite Eve runs, I would always die to Worms, I'd always die to E2, but now I've had many runs make it to the Day 5. Also, I want to add as well, um, I think if you're doing this game casually, if you're learning this game... If you're a speedrunner and you just beat day two, you have a very strong chance to make it to day five. In most cases, the hardest parts of the game are day two and day five in terms of reset points. I think starting off, those are the days that are definitely going to be your um, area. That, yeah, I loved Parasite Eve casually. Uh, I was able to beat it in one sitting in one stream. I love this game. And uh, when I found out that speedrunner.com had an amazing guide made by amazing runners, it was immensely easy to learn. Really, the hardest part about Parasite Eve is you're spending four hours. <laughs> Like, when I started off, I think I had, like, a three-and-a-half-hour run or something like that, or, like, almost four-hour run. And that's the hardest part, just putting in the physical hours. But learning the game is immensely easy. And not because the game is exactly easy, but because the route has made it so optimal. Um, the runners of this game, the community, has put in so much work, and you really can't give them enough props. Um, Primus with his initial guide, all the additions by people like, you know, Palmer, Plywood, Cactus, all of those people. Uh, there's a lot of names on that page that they give credit for, so. You can find that on speedrun.com. But, uh, yeah, I know uh, a lot of people uh, have done this game, and it's quite nice. Also, my favorite joke about this room is that this is a $3,000 New York City apartment. I mean, would you buy it? Maybe. I'd consider it. You believe it? Me too. Oh, funny enough, going into the tool routing too, I killed the run earlier today. There's a fire. It's called Central Heating Cloud. It's called Central Heating. It's central and it's heating. Alrighty, anyway, Eve was very good. We are now done with day two. 
we'll be going into day three. Alrighty, so if depending on how you got this done, and Crazy Awesome was doing very good in this game. I know they changed the whole route, the hammer route, which we are now officially beginning the realm of the hammer route. Um, hammer route was the idea that we're going to forego having optimal stats and we're going for straight up damage. In the past, what would happen is you would want particularly charged shots. Now, damage, damage, damage. That is going to be our friend, and we're getting a lot of damage. However, I must warn you of certain things, because I will be doing a slightly unorthodox route, because I got very lucky. Now, um, if you did not get the first tool, uh, earlier in the park, I picked up the tool from a box, and I said you can get a tool or ammo, and then I fought two birds and, like, a frisbee guy. Um, this will change your route depending on how you did this. I will not be doing it, but I will tell you what to do, and I'll be grabbing something safe to kind of show you the room of doing it. Anyway, first things first, we'll be going left. Maybe going to the gun shop. And yeah, Pri, I'm very proud of Crazy Awesome. Crazy Awesome put in a lot of work on this game. Alright, so after the gunshot happens, I just start moving left. We're gonna be getting a lot of things in this gun shop. You don't need everything, but you'll be grabbing most of the stuff. I'll tell you what is optional. However, it's so short to grab it, I tend to grab everything. There we go. So, first things first, go up left. You're going to be doing most of your movement in the other part of the store. Grab the green box right here. That gives you the M11. You'll be then grabbing a gun right here. I'll give you the G19. There's going to be an invisible chest underneath here. This will give you another tool. As my spider fates will be doing good. After the tool, you'll be grabbing two more boxes. You only need one of these. Uh, you don't need the range upgrade. So, this box, you don't technically need by, like, grabbing because I'm greedy. You do need this one, though, because this will give you bullet capacity. Alright, once you have all that, you may leave the gun shop. Now, we're then going to be going back up, and just make sure you don't go into the, the fire hydrant or anything, or the poles. You can do it, I've done it before, it's a bit rough. There's also the idea of knowing where to move is extremely important in a game like this. Like, just knowing basic movement is super, super good. Next, you must enter the pharmacy. If you're playing ballsy, you're playing risky, you can enter and leave. If you did not get the tool in the far back, if you go up and all the way left, there's a hidden room that will have a tool. Uh, I'm not going to grab it, but if you go all the way left up here, you may grab it. This box will always have a revive. I recommend you grab it if you're starting off. If you want that hidden tool all the way up and to the left, this is only if you miss the first tool grab in the park. If you miss that, you must grab that tool. It is immensely important. And while it will lose you time, it will save you more in the long run. Next, before we go into the police car, what we're going to be doing is we are going to be doing a lot of stat upgrades. One, go into the M16. That is going now to the M11. Give it your stats. Now, M84 going into the M11. Give it your stats. And now, G19 going to M11. If you have a tool, give it your stats. That's all very good. BP, you don't have any, so that's fine. Sort your guns. Now, use the upgrades you got on the M11. Save any defense upgrades that you may have had and equip the gun. Now, you're going to be going on the left side. It's very awkward, but line up with that siren and you'll have a better chance of getting in the car. I think there's actually a guide on speedrun.com of how to get in the car. It is the hardest boss in the game. Because if you go into the back, it'll keep kicking you out. So you must line up with it. And it's super awkward. It really is only something that will work with time. Now, I bet you're wondering, what if I don't have enough tools? Do not upgrade the G19, or do not put the G19 tool on your main gun yet. So the G19 is the last one you want to do. Keep in mind, I got an extra tool that I shouldn't have. What are you going to be doing with the extra tool? I will show you in a bit. But for right now, you will likely have two tools. Uh, you'll have, if you have, well, you should have two tools. If you have two, you'll do everything but the G19, and you'll be putting all the damage into the M11. The M11 will be your main gun. Uh, keep in mind, this will be notated in that guide I talked about. I'm assuming if you're trying to learn this game, you're reading along with that, do it. It's really easy. This is all mashing, so I can talk a bit about it. The M11 fires five bullets traditionally. It has a five-shot spread. The five-shot spread will make every one of those five shots hit very hard. This is also why I went for a lot of ammo pickups, and I made sure I grabbed ammo every time. Running out of ammo will be immensely bad. So I don't want to do that. If you don't, if you can't upgrade the G19, what's going to happen is once we get to the police station, we'll be getting an automatic tool. That tool will always drop from a fight. We'll now be using that tool on the G19. 
Now I mentioned, but you're wondering, what about that YOLO tool you talked about earlier? The YOLO tool is a special item that if you get it, you can put more damage into your gun. And I love that. If you don't get it, you'll disregard a gun we grab later. If you do get it, it's free damage. And I learned this from Crazy Awesome as a result of the hammer route. And again, the idea is we're putting so much damage in our gun, the five shot spread doesn't matter. Because normally, charge shots that um, down here, the wood mentioned the idea of a charge shot. So normally you have two bullets that hit much harder. But we'll have a five shot spread. Just bop, 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 bop. And I want all those to hit harder. The idea behind the hammer out is I can end certain fights faster because I'm going to be getting more shots out that do equivalent damage to the two shot. And while the two shot, you know, might be hit harder, if the five shot can spend a less turn on it, that's going to be better for me. As well, I'll have more time during those shots building up my active timer. So I can put more shots into damage. And yes, this is why ammo is important. We will be going back to the traditional route later, but I'll talk more about that once we get into it. Also, this game does have RNG, unfortunately, and there's no way to manipulate it. So that is something to keep in mind. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed the commentary so far. I've been talking a lot about this game. I've learned a lot about this game, and I'm happy about that. I went from being an absolute ape about it, and now I can kind of talk about it. So it's nice. But also, that's how runs of this, uh, any game technically go. Uh, the better, the more you do it, the better you'll be. And eventually, you will, you can be good enough where you can kind of just talk about everything about it. And I think that's nice. I think that's very nice, in fact. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad it's been enjoyable. Also, like I mentioned, for any of these FMVs... Hey, look, Ma, no hands. You know what I do during the FMVs? I plug my social media. Oh no, Juo, it's me. Check out my Discord, Twitter, and Instagram. Ha 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 ha, I get it. Alright, Juo, pucker up. I hope you're doing good, Juo. Yeah, I gotta plug my social media during these. That's the plan. At the Kissick Dices? Not allowed. Can't do that. No, not allowed. Not allowed. You didn't even post the Shy Boy emote. Mistletoe back. That's how they get you. Mistletoe backfire. Poor Juo just woke up. Oh, that's what Mac Shark could be doing good. That's what happens for you. See, look at them. Oh, he's so shy. Such a shy emote. Alright, let's see if I get the good omen or the bad omen. So I heard from Crazy Awesome that there is a bad omen in this run. If Clamp uh, does not turn off the monitor, it is a bad omen. Funny enough, the last run he didn't turn off the monitor. I don't know how it happens, it's just a glitch where he won't turn off the monitor. Normally he's just turn off the monitor after uh, Daniel looks at it, um, but there's a good chance he won't. What if we kiss in the Parasite Eve doctor's office? <gasps> Unless. Also, I should mention once again, as with all games, muscle memory is key. The more you play it, the more you'll kind of know where to go. I think one of the toughest parts of learning this game is just learning every movement. Because three hours of run really adds up. Also, the next area gets us onto a new topic. Refighting. How's it going, N Zero? Welcome to the stream. Parasite Eve is a game. Also, let's see. Bad luck or good luck? Wait. Do I have the bad luck? He didn't turn off the. Oh no. He didn't turn off the monitor. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. It's a bad omen. Monitor's on. He didn't turn it off. That's a bad omen, actually. Technically, it saves time, but it's a—it's just a bad omen. I don't, I, it's hard to say, but the monitor stays on and he doesn't turn it off. Because normally, he's just to reach over and turn it off before he gets grabbed. But I gotta skip. It's very minor, and it saves like literally a, like, a, like a microsecond. But if you get it, it's, bad, it's a bad omen, apparently. So hopefully, it doesn't bleed into the run. Anyway, we're going to NYPD now. This is where most of Day 3 takes place. 
Once again, I will say, make sure that your proper loadout is here. There we go. Yeah, it's fun, Enzo. I do a lot of horror games. I should also mention that we're going to be getting into the idea of a CM vest now. Uh, I should mention as well, if, you read, if you're reading along the tutorial, there is something I didn't uh, mention, which is there is a CM vest you can grab earlier, which is CM vest 1. It replaces KV vest 2. What CM vest does is if you're struggling with the game, it will, if you take enough damage, it will automatically heal you, which can be very safe for the worms and stuff in the early game. And if you're going to the park and you're having trouble, please use that. There's no shame in that. It probably loses you maybe about, I don't know, 30 seconds to a minute uh, by picking it up. But you can grab that, and that's okay. Uh, we'll be getting a CM vest in a moment here, because we'll be needing that soon. But right now, make sure your stuff is equipped. You'll probably be having your base armor that you grabbed, either KV or the auto potion, or you will be using, and you should have the M11 on right now. Uh, if you forget to uh, have the M11, what should happen is you can change it out during the battle. Anyway, what's going to happen now is I should be able to kill one of these things very quickly. And also, look how fast that went. He's now dead. This guy will always drop an offense one. You want that for later. Don't worry about using it right now. You're going to be dealing plenty of damage, and that's not going to be a huge deal quite yet. Keep in mind, though, offense one is super important. Runs haunted. It's true. It's true, Arden. It's true. Welcome to the stream. Hope you're doing good today. Also, if you didn't grab the health earlier, it is still here, and you may grab it now. How do you deal with the charms? Like good luck charms and bad charms? That'd be sad. It is way faster. This is all thanks to Crazy Awesome, like I mentioned. This is called the Hammer Route. You're putting a lot into damage. So mash dialogue until you see, like, go get him, I or something like that. Once you see that, slow down on the mashing. Nail this monster. All right. So here we go. Store item. You're going to be storing the Zuki and the Hamaya. Store both of those, and now you get rid of useless junk. And now you have a good inventory again. Some items can't be removed, which are key items. So, the thing I want to talk about now is the concept of refighting. Whenever you go through hallways now in certain areas that you've done a fight, you have a rough chance to get refights. What a refight is, is you fight the same enemy that you fought earlier. The rooms won't always clear. There's a rare chance they can come back. So, the upside is you might get some experience. The downside, you have to do it again. Getting too many refights will not be good. So, you know, it's like a reset, refight. Any hallway that has a fight now has a chance to get you a refight that you've been through. So, right now I'm doing a fight with a rat and a bird. Uh, I'm gonna kill both. And he should be dead in a moment. You can actually one-cycle some of these fights if you get all crits. Also, I picked up junk for no reason. This is kind of the idea that, you know, trash enemies give you trash. But once I kind of talk to this guy down here, what can happen is when I'm going back to that hallway to make progress, I could end up in a refight. If you're wondering why I'm at a... No, you don't want to run away. Uh, running away is will be slower and just not as good. Take every fight. You'll be never running away. Because uh, the thing is, refighting won't even be all that bad. Because you can still get experience. Some refights are good. In fact, if you get too many skipped fights, you can actually end up below experience. Which is really bad. Like, there is an optimum, optimal amount of refighting. I don't know what it is. But it, it's never worth it to run from the fight. It will never be worth it. Alright, so I skipped a refight. That's pretty good there. We're not going to be passing this dead dude up ahead. I don't know if he's exactly dead, but we're passing him. He's just kind of chilling like me, drunk on my lawn. Uh, we're going into this room. Go only right. And you go into the room, you'll enter a fight. So, I picked up ammo now, or an armor now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to level up if I have it, and now I'm going to be sorting my inventory. If you don't have it, that's fine. And we're going to be equipping the vest. CM vest. And I am now going to be deleting the KV vest. I'm going to be using any defense upgrades I had and the offense upgrade. Uh, right now I have nothing else. I have a lot of mess in ones, and now we're fine. Also, I will heal. So, what's going to happen now is if I get hit too much, if I get hit too much, I will now heal automatically. I don't need to go to the menu anymore. That will dip into my medicines. Now, I don't want to dip into too many medicines, but I don't need to worry, especially for boss fights. I don't have to die now, which is very good for me. Also, morning, Panda. Hope you're doing good today. You can kind of see the ideal situation, right? At least I hope so, chat. At least I hope so. So, 
So, well, I bet you're wondering, hey, you're doing so good, you're strong, what's the downside? You're about to see. In this room, we're going to be hitting a fight with three spiders. I cannot pick my targets, that is a part of the speed. So I try to run down to try to bait that one into uh, coming towards me. Uh, I have no choice in who I attack. This is why the five spreads a little bit better, because it's going to give me more chances to hit enemies. And I can just have, you know, more damage spread around. This is also why I like range. So, I mentioned earlier I like to pick up range. I do it because there's a good chance you might be too far away from an enemy, just barely. If you're too far away, you'll be dealing minimal damage or just not even hitting the enemy. So, that's why I do that. And it'll give you a big orb of uh, range, a big sphere, I suppose. Any enemies in that sphere, you have a chance to hit. If there's only one enemy, you'll hit that one enemy five times. If it's like three enemies, it'll spread five shots among three enemies. And this will be really good on some parts, really bad on others. It's just something to keep in mind. Keep that in mind, absolutely. Also, poor dog. Luckily, though, unless I kill this run due to bad uh, tool management, I have two revives, and it should be immensely safe. Uh, I don't normally try to take two revives, but we have two revives. They're good to have. Alrighty. Also, I like this game because this is one of the only games as a horror game that had a good police chief. This fight will always give you a tool. If for some reason you have too much junk in your inventory, make sure you get rid of it. This fight is immensely important. Alright, let's see. Also, you can see I healed there. Alright, he should be dead in one more hit. Always take the stuff and use this tool. First off, I'm also going to heal. Now, the tool, what will end up happening is... Hold on, that gives me stats. Okay, so give me your stats. Good. You don't need to do this, but I get to do this. You'll be using that on the G19 if you have the G19. This game, eight shots and you have spread. You lose a lot of ammo. Every shot loses ammo. That's the downside of this. You'll be using that on the G19 right there. Now, this is in the boss fight room. Before you enter, make sure you are healed to full. As always, in most boss fights. Right now, I'm, not, I'm near full. And then make sure your gun is either at the minimum or the maximum. Make sure you also level up if you have one. If you don't, that's fine. At this point, I should mention, you are no longer putting level ups into offense. Now, level ups for a while will be going into something called active timer. This will make your turns faster. This is kind of an important part to note in terms of the swap. Now, the Shiva fight can go in one of two ways. Which is, I guess, good or bad. Also, I'm going to move this right here because I don't know why that's not there. The general idea is if you run around, uh, it will try to attack you with a beam. Beam's the good attack. Uh, it can also try to ram you. The ram is the okay attack. Uh, it's all RNG based. Um, I don't know how it decides what you do. Um, if you can see the bolts, uh, that will normally kind of, uh, you know, do a lot of damage to you. I think it's about half your health. A bite will do a lot, as you can see there. Luckily for me, I have a revive, which is good for me. Normally, you want to stay about 90 health. Uh, if you are running low on health, what you can do is you can actually bump into Shiva, and that will start to heal you. Luckily for me, though, I have two revives, and this fight should be ending soon. Also, if nothing happens and uh, she barks, uh, that's going to be just a uh, free hit for you. Alright, good. And she should be dead coming up right now. Good. Alright, do not pick up that weapon. If you pick it up, you may discard it later. If you got the yellow tool, you want that weapon. Because I have the yellow tool currently. Also, I forgot to split. There we go. So keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. And how's it Katrina? I'm going to start the prediction. I can do that right now, in fact. I'll be starting prediction. We're going to be doing something called RNG. There are two weapons I can get coming up. I'll be putting it on a two-minute pull. Actually, make it a five-minute pull. There are two weapons I may get. This is going to be the Micro Uzi or the M10. The Micro Uzi is good luck. The M10 is bad luck. I lose time if I take the, uh, the Micro... Uh, the, uh, if I get the M10. Yes, if you got the YOLO tool, you want that weapon. Uh, I learned this from Crazy Awesome. 
Uh, if you do not have the micro tool, you don't care about it. Also, I'm going to be very far ahead right now because those are pretty good sections. I had a lot of damage output. All right, now we're back in the NYPD. Um, it's really only a run killer if you have world record, I think. Like, getting the M10 is not the end of the world. Like, right now, I think world record has the M10. Like, that's how good the new route is. You can get world record with the M10. That's on Ghost Well, I'm actually doing a speedruns explain of Paris at Eve. Uh, I'm finally good enough for this game where I can kind of do that. Yep, that's on Striker. And right now, we have a very good run. I lost one of my revives, but like I mentioned, I had two. I had one from the Worms, and I have one from the Pharmacy. And you know what? I'm very I'm very glad I grabbed that one from the Pharmacy. That's going to be good for us coming up later. Now, if you're wondering where we're going, we're going to that room where you got the free tool. The one right next to that. So it'll be right up here. And then once you enter here, it just mashes. Also, once again, I want to remind chat, if you're doing the prediction here on Twitch, if you're doing the prediction chat, Micro Uzi is good. M10 is bad. Not even a fun one either. Ooh, let me read that right there. Let's see this. Let's see this on band request. I like reading these. I was doing insane fetus. I like your name. I hope you're doing good. Let's see this. Yeah, uh... Yeah, that, that's that's gonna be a pretty easy uh that's a, that's a pretty easy we're ignoring that that that's a pretty easy one though we're uh, just not gonna unban yeah fly is probably the nice part palmer for which part which part goes oh no this is my own personal thing uh this is my own personal i do these for my youtube uh i have a series on youtube where i talk about a bunch of different games that i personally explain as i would be running them uh, this is a personal series, and it's just kind of the, it's kind of the moron's guide to understanding, because I am a moron. And yeah, I try to do games I understand quite well. So that's how it goes, Ghostuma. It's not, it's not like an official thing. It's something, it's a series I've been having on YouTube, which I've got, had a lot of compliments on, so I'm glad about that. Alright, we're now going to the hospital. This is going to be day four's primary level. It's kind of funny as well, because some of the minor RNG aspects have disappeared, but we got a little bit more. Like, now the YOLO tool gives you really good stats. But, again, there's not there's a chance you might not get it. It's funny, though, because I'm actually trading... Uh, I have a lot of offense, but from previous runs, I had a lot of defense. Yeah, nah, it's nothing good. Like, I'd read out the request if it wasn't uh, bad, but it's just not good. No, 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 no. I thought there was some big channel... Hey, we might be a big channel someday, Ghost Kumo. My YouTube's got 5,000. 5,000 uh, chads decided to subscribe to me on YouTube. And if you're not subbed on YouTube, well, you can be a chad if you are. Chad, chad, not chab. Chad. Anyway, after my Ada finishes you giving things, you can go up at some point. Just mash through his dialogue. There you go. Ignore my Ada. Okay, immediately hold up. What's going to happen is we're getting a tool out of this closet. I'm not sure what happened with the other one I had. I think I just mi mixed up one of my stats, and that's okay. I have the right gun. I think I just messed up a stat on the button press or something. Um, this is where the RNG kind of comes into hand. Also, I want to mention these rooms are very awkward. Make sure that you're either going, you know, like... So it's not down, it's right. And, like, down brings you left. It's kind of awkward. Yeah, YouTube's been going good lately. So, it's been nice. And these speedruns explain things have been really good for people. I think a lot of people, um, like them. So I'm glad. I'm glad, Lupus. I have a few more coming up, uh, that I kind of pre-did. And, um... And it's also nice as well, because I have a decent understanding of the games I play. And it's funny as well, because Ghost Kumo, I think, actually encouraged me to do Parasite Evil at one point. Uh, I know a few people did. A few people encouraged me I should try doing more Parasite Eve, and uh, I'm surprised how much of it I did. Alright, so the hospital's route is pretty easy, but we're going to be getting a lot of a lot of stuff. Oh, of course it's relative, I hear that. Have a good night, Parasu. We'll see if you get points or not, but you're a non-believer, so hope you lose your points. I like the believers. I like the ones. The ones are good. Okay, so this room is going to have a few things. First things first, we're gathering three fuses, and in addition to that, we're getting more guns. So, do not go too deep in the room. You might get an extra fight. We're going to be grabbing that and this glowing thing right up here. 
Yeah, it's nice. Let's see. Next, we're gonna be going over here. Uh, if you are playing it safe, which I think I will, uh, I have a deep feeling that I might be low on medicines, and I'd rather have more of the good medicine. Well, let's play it safe for once. Uh, we're going to run up and immediately go left. And this is kind of funny that I mentioned, because the load immediately goes into, like, another load. And that's kind of how fast that can go. I feel like you know what you're doing. Some of these rooms are instantaneous. Also, this box is good if you want medicine. Hey, we'll see. We'll see. And that's why I'm talking. You got to move during the load. And we'll be getting more tools and offenses throughout this whole section. Also, don't worry too much about item management. Whenever you like you use a key, I will throw it away, so it's pretty good there. Okay, now we're meeting a new enemy. These are the jellies and the flies. The jellies will poison you, and they will hit you very often. Uh, the flies will spit green stuff at you. I think it slows you down if you go into it. It's not a huge deal. The jelly is the main one to worry about. Uh, the jellies can also just do a lot of damage to you in general, and it will stack with poison. Luckily, poison's not a huge deal because it will go away. There we go. And I got some good medicines off that. Uh, it's kind of weird on what does what doesn't give you soft. Just kind of analyze the inventory. This will give me offense. Also, the morning twisting does suck the alchemy and give you taste, and this will give me a tool. Uh, how hard is it compared to Parasitic 2 or say RE3? I don't know. Depends. Depends on the playstyle. I know some people who had a lot of trouble with this game. I really don't know Heaven's Door. It's hard to say. If you're not used to RPGs, it's very hard. If you are used to RPGs, I think it's really easy. Like, I thought Parasitic 2 was more hard to play than this game because I didn't like Parasitic 2. But some people told me the opposite. I really like this game, though. Alright, so Raptors hit hard and they'll throw fire at you. The fire travels. It hits me quite often, in fact. It's not the end of the world if it does, though. Alright, also, I don't mind getting hit too much because, like I said, I should get automatic healing in a moment. In fact, if I don't, that's okay as well. Inventory is full. Really? Okay, my inventory needs management. Hold on. Let's do some medicine ones. Good. Alright, we can use that. And we're all good. Oh, hold on, I level up. Cool. Cool. Remember, any time you're going... Oh, can I pick that up? Thank you. Any time you're going into your inventory, if you have too many medicine ones, this is the time to start using them. Uh, they're going to be good to have. And you, you want your other medicines to kind of be the ones to last longer. You want more room for other medicines. And you do need more and more inventory space. So keep that in mind. You kind of see the dilemma here. Now you're wondering, how do I get rid of inventory space? You'll get automatically hit. Uh, also, you don't want to pick up too many things. I would have liked to wait a couple rooms, but it's not the end of the world. Alright, now it is time for the M10 or the Micro Uzi. That chest on the left will decide your fate. If you have the Micro Uzi, congratulations, you have good luck and you can save oodles of time in the museum. If you got M10, you save slight time early, but you'll lose a lot more time later. First things first, go behind this and pick up this item right here. This will be an offense upgrade. It looks like I got offense one. Now, we're going to this box. Let's stand. How's the stream? We ended up getting M10. We got the bad luck. That's okay. I'll explain what to do with both anyway. Oh, you're doing good. Dan, thank you for the raid. What are you doing today? Now, we're going to pick this tool as well. So, right now, up M10 goes to Micro Uzi with stats. M79 goes to Micro Uzi with the quick fire. Rate of fire. Right there. And then uh, M92, if you have the YOLO tool, will go to M10 with stats. And that is what you want. As well, if you level up, do that. I recommend also make sure that's really loaded. Uh, use your offense 1 on the M10. Load the M10. And make sure you are healing. Just heal it. That's fine. Alrighty, so we got the bad results. Stream was good. Nice. The ultimate RA6. Ooh, that's fun. So... Why is it bad? That is the question. Also, now I'm firing less shots, but we're going to be hitting much harder. This will be the time for me to conserve ammo, and that's going to be good for us. We're kind of back to the normal route. 
Also, these guys usually drop trash. I don't know why I picked that up. But welcome, Raiders, as well. I am McDysis. I do a lot of horror games and horror game accessories. So if you're into that, you are absolutely in the right place. And I hope you're all having a great day. If you don't know Dan, you should. He actually ran Paris at Eve, and he's a good runner. Yep, Believer's Lost. So, the reason why the M10 can lose you time. The Micro Uzi has enough slots to get more upgrades. The M10 does not have these slots exactly. So, with the Micro Uzi, you can get a slot called Quick Draw, which will let you go first sometimes. You can also get Ice Bullets, which will end up helping you for the museum. The M10 cannot utilize these things, so you'll be going more into damage. Now, obviously, there's still RNG to be had, but the idea of getting m more first times will be good for you. Um, this won't affect you realistically until you get to the museum. But you'll actually see me skip a split during my run. That is going to be the warehouse. But yeah, if anyone's coming in, hope you're having a good day. And how's it going to hit our chunks? <coughs> I'm even fall. I'm dying. I'm not dying, I've been talking a lot. Alright, time to go to the hell hallway. I do want to mention once again, you can still get world record with an M10. You can still do it. So, the hell hallway, what is it? Coming up, you are going to have the chance to get a refight in every single room. Wow, can you stop hitting that jelly? Thank you. Ah, better. Okay, now I have a good split. Also, positioning-wise, I always make sure I am between the jellies. I'm making sure I'm between two enemies, so if I hit either one, I'll be hitting that one. Yeah, it's been a nice Monday. I'm doing a speedrun explained video of this, so I'm explaining as much as I can. Also, I want to avoid healing manually right now. I want the CM best to do work for me. It's very important that it does that. Predictions? I, I will do that later. Mods can do too. You get the badge of honor, uh, bad. If you're a two, I guess you win, unfortunately. If you're a one, I'm so sorry, you lost your points. Yeah, you can wait. All right, also, like I, oh, that's good. Like I mentioned, you want to make sure that you are ending up near the end of a fight. So if you're on the bottom left, you can get to this area faster. Uh, the next fight, you end up in the top middle. And stuff like that. So, we're going to be doing three fights in total. I fought the Jellies, I fought these two dudes, and I'll be fighting a couple other dudes in the next room. Now, what's the dilemma? Every single room, whatever the M10 option is, the M10 has one. I think that's two, but M10 has one. Every single one of these rooms, including this one, can give me potentially an extra fight. There we go, there's a heal too. Like I mentioned, I would like to not take extra fights. There is such a thing as being overleveled. I'd rather not be overleveled. And... There we go. And up in the middle. Not bad. What overlevel does? Eh, there's nothing wrong with being overleveled. It just means you wasted time doing more fights. Like, the benefit is ne uh, negligible. Have a Merry Christmas to you as well, Dave Nucci. Have a Merry Christmas to you as well. GG's team two. No, BG. Not well played. I say BG. We love the ones in this chat. The twos, less so. So, what decides an extra fight? Roll the dice. If you're lucky, no fight. If you're unlucky, fight. So, that's all I can tell you. Nope, haste isn't what matters, actually. You know the likelihood? I'm guessing it's 50-50, uh, because I don't have no, I have no clue. I've had runs where I never get it, I've had days where I always get it. I'm not sure on the exact spread. Haste is something that's nice, but not mandatory for the bug fight. Bad luck, I got an extra fight. I'll probably have haste, so no worries there. I believe believer next time? Ah, it's always next time with chats. They never believe in the first try. It's always next time. Oh, hey, we found that curse. It's M10. No, you can have haste. You can. Um, you don't need it, but you can have it. Ah, 
Sounds good. Like I mentioned, every single one of these upcoming rooms has the chance to have an extra fight. We didn't get one there, and we have one more we can get. Didn't get one there. Okay, that's actually pretty good. Uh, the first one gave us an extra fight, but the fact that the other two did not, good. Very good. That's what you want. Um, and like I mentioned, it's entirely random. Now, the thing is, I did mention... It's not quite every fight skipped is good. Because if you skip too many fights, you'll be underleveled. And being underleveled is also a problem. The main idea is throughout the game, in day 5, we want to build to get an ability called Liberate. Also known as Liberate, as I call it. I'm stupid. But, Liberate is going to be your kind of, uh, your all-out attack, like, what, it's your limit break in Final Fantasy games? It's that general idea, and it will do immense damage in the late game, and that's what we're gonna want. Also, say hello to Big Jelly Man. This guy can kill you, who actually killed my run earlier on accident. So, don't die to Jelly Man. Also, if you pick up that vest, don't worry about it. You don't need that vest. What you can do is, one, grab the ammo here. You need a lot of ammo. Two, it's gonna be the left valve. Is your finisher? Yeah, and you'll be using that later. Liberate's a very powerful move. If you did grab that, and, you know, your inventory is a bit rough, what you can do, you can just delete it. Also, you don't need any Cure M's or Cure P's. Not to say you don't need any Cures in general, but you don't need any of those. Also, I probably should have tried to level up. I'll do that near the, before the boss. My inventory ain't looking too bad. Now, something stupid that's going to be very, very specific. Do not mash the button here. It's okay to wait. Go to floor 13. If you mash, you will accidentally go to the basement, and I will laugh at you if I hear about this. I'm sorry. I've done it earlier during my PB. It happens to the best of us. It happened to me, in fact. I mean, that's not the best of us. In fact, that's probably near the bottom of the totem pole. But, uh, don't do it. Alright, time to fight the enemy, the mixed man. This guy we fought earlier, and he's annoying, because I can't aim, and he will keep spawning an enemy, which is that brain on his skull. The mixed man will die if the brain is attached to him, and he'll kill both him and the brain. Now, the problem is, he'll keep regenerating brains, so in theory, you can keep losing ammo. This is a bit of unfortunate RNG. Luckily, I killed the mixed man, so I will stop getting brain spawns. Brain spawns are bad. Also, I picked up a bunch of trash right there. I'll be throwing it out in a moment. Probably... Uh, I have a room I do so in. There's a tool right there, and also this puzzle just talked to the arrow. They'll be like, I, I know what I'm doing. And then you can just sort of mash and she'll do it. Uh, me too, Tui Pui. Me too. The giant red button. So that's the kind of thing to keep out on the mixed man fight. You gotta pray. Now, if you do want to remove some of the RNG, if you're feeling uh, annoyed, uh, something called Charge Shot could deal with the Mixed Man. However, it will be much more efficient if you don't do that. The charge Shot will phase you. It's good for some parts, usually as a finisher, but you don't want to be using it uh, too much. Also, it digs into your PE, which is also unfortunate. You know, like Pure Rems here. Are the slopes? I have not done so recently, but I used to snowboard, yeah. I'm sorry to hear about that, but I'm glad you've been enjoying them, JK. So hope it'll be okay. And yeah, it was fun. I like all in every time. It's been a lot of fun. Alright, so these guys probably won't kill me. I'll probably end up healing in a moment before that happens. Also, so far, this fight's good. Alright, mixed man should die in a moment. Also, you're gonna be reading both of these files. So we're gonna end by the files here. Yeah, I have a snowboard in my closet. I showed off the other day, in fact. There we go. Okay, I leveled up and I have all this. I don't really worry about picking everything up because now we're actually gonna heal. Uh, we're gonna be using some of those medicine ones. And we're gonna be getting rid of this. Like I mentioned, you don't want too many medicine ones in your inventory. That was the last fight for the upcoming boss. Uh, make sure your inventory is nice and clear. Make sure your ammo is full. You'll be getting another junk from this. That's okay. And also, active time. Make sure you're leveling that up. Okay, we're now prepared for the boss fight. You're going to be talking to both of these. One will give you a key, the other will give you junk. You need to grab both. The first one will always give you junk. The second one will always give you a key. Uh, don't try to mind game it. That's not how it works. The game thought about that. The game looked into your soul and was like, I know what you're trying to do. And then they laughed at you. 
Goofy foot? Uh, I don't remember. I don't think that was Goofy. I think that was regular. Or snowboarding. I don't think Goofy's left foot forward, right? Or right foot forward. I don't remember. I did left foot forward. Okay, that's right. Yeah, I did left foot forward. Yeah, I didn't do Goofy now. Alrighty, so I did everything there because the elevator key gets used right there and we're approaching the boss fight coming up. This boss fight can kill your run. Um, haste will be your friend if you have it. If you don't have it, it's not the end of the world. I actually have runs that beat out my haste time. We now have the ability to use something called a haste. You could have done it earlier, but it's not really worth it in some of the parts. It's mainly good for boss fights and long fights. Because the general idea is you're using a turn on haste. And while you get faster turns afterward, it won't really matter to you. So, let's begin this fight. Starting about now. We're going to run down to the giant spider and engage it. I have my ammo, and I want to get haste off soon, depending on my PE. I may have used a bit too much. It's okay if you did. Give me some time to run up to it. Also, JK Zeus, thank you for the five gifted subs and the debut. It is much appreciated. Also, now I have the stuff. Uh, that might be bad, actually. Uh, you know what? I'm just going to fire. Let's just shoot. All right. I dodged the web, apparently. Don't get hit by the web. That wastes a lot of time. Don't get hit by the web. I threaded the needle. Now I may haste. Thank you, JK Zeus. Going to Caribbean. Uh, Brazilian Hope, Zone Sinister, Spurious Platypus, and Sang Draken. So, do not get hit by webs. Uh, try to avoid them as much as possible. You want to stay in and avoid the sweeping attack. This is why the CM Vest will be good, because you can haste and attack. If you die, you have revives, and that's okay. I really wish I didn't eat that death, though, because this boss can hit rather hard. Alright, it killed me right going into phase two. This boss is a two-phase fight. Phase one went okay enough. I kind of wish I didn't die, but that is okay. You can also dodge the attack like so. Now, I don't have enough for phase two haste, but luckily, I think about four, three to four rounds of damage should kill it. Now, it's fire. That's actually a good attack. That's what you want. It doesn't do anything. The hard attack is the swipe. Alright, should be dead in... Now, actually. Alright, that was a fine phase one. I kind of wish I ended more towards the bottom, but you know what? We'll deal with it. And thank you, JK Zeus. Do not grab the item. So, it's like five X presses. There we go, level 23. And do not grab the G23. You don't need that gun. That gun will be useless. We don't need it. So, I did die, and that's okay. But we'll keep going. And thank you again, JK Zeus. I hope you are doing as good as you can. I'm sorry to hear that. The uh, You have that one thing. The MS. I hope you'll be alright. I'm glad you've been enjoying the stream. Important thing to note. You will die if you're not paying attention. There is a jet coming for the roof. The moment this cutscene ends, you need to run off the roof. It's in the bottom left. Like I mentioned, the revive... Actually, I kind of should have that revive, because now I have to do one of the hardest fights in the game, revivalist. So, hopefully that won't be a huge issue. CM Vest doesn't always come in handy, but sometimes it does. Uh, depending on how a fight goes, it is okay to play it safe, especially once you get an ability called Pre-Raise. If you really want to do it, you can do that one. This is why two revives are nice. Alrighty, after this exchange of dialogue, we're going to be going bottom left. Oh yeah. Well, it's a jet coming straight for you. The jet. So run away. That's also kind of weird with the haste thing, because you notice I beat the spider boss really quickly. So if you're doing it right, you shouldn't have to worry. If you're wondering what went wrong in that fight, I did not anticipate webs that early. I got a bit of a rough spawn for that fight, and sometimes it just doesn't go the way you quite want it to. And that's okay. Like, I was thinking about my AT for a sec, my active timer. I was like, do I shoot or do I haste? Because if I got hit by the webs, haste would have canceled. Do not be hit by webs. You can hemorrhage health there. Anyway, with this fight, this fight's easy. Go right about here and just shoot. I'll take one to two turns. To me, one turn. An explanation, just keep repeating the word mitochondria to yourself. You'll be okay. That's all you have to do. Thank you for the follow. Thank you for the follow. And that is it. I'm not going to speed on an explanation of the story. Actually, that is it. Just the word mitochondria repeatedly. And you just repeat that to yourself, you will be good. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Well, 
Alrighty, anyway, once you beat the giant spider, luckily for you, you're mostly done. You just have to finish up in the police department, but you should be good once you're all done there. It'll automatically bring you back, and you can start moving again. And that is all good. All you're going to do is go to the chief's office. Okay, so now comes the time. M10 or Micro Uzi. If you got the Micro Uzi, you will be losing a slight amount of time. If you got the M10, you will be gaining a slight amount of time. The Micro Uzi is a scaling gun. You will save time later. The M10 is a... You lose time later. But you gain time early. The difference is mostly minimal now. It used to be minutes, now it's like maybe a few... Se like maybe 30 seconds or something on peak performance. But... That is something to consider. You'll be gaining a bit of time, but losing some others. The reason why is because we're doing so much damage now that turns matter a lot less. I am losing a bit of time because of the giant spider. That is okay. I had a feeling that fight was not perfect. Alrighty, so once we get to day five, it's going to throw us on the map. What we, we want to go is going to be Chinatown right now because we got the M10. If you got the Micro Uzi, you'll be going to the warehouse, and in the warehouse, what you'll be doing is you'll be getting a tool and a gun. You'll be getting quick draw from that gun. Anyway, since we are not going there, we'll be going to Chinatown! Oh, wait, not there. Uh, step. So, if you have Micro Uzi, you'll come here eventually. If you have M10, you're here now. I got M10, so we're here now. You're not getting a new Parasite Eve game. I already talked about this earlier because of every stream. It's not happening. You're more likely to get a new Gex game and you are getting a new Gex game. Embrace Gex. These, en these enemies don't matter too much. They're kind of like the dogs from earlier. M10 can be a good thing? No. M10 saves time early, but you lose it all later. The M10 is not a good gun to have. You lose time from having it. But again, it looks like you'll save time. You're not saving time. You lose a lot of time starting in the sewers. Actually, starting right in Chinatown, you're losing time. The reason why is because the Micro Uzi will allow you to go first on pretty much every turn, which is much more optimal because you don't have to wait for that AT bar to charge. You can start doing damage. All right, after this fight, go left, because on the left side, there's going to be an offense upgrade. This is still a part of the hammer route, right in this invisible chest. Offense one, or I think two. You're grabbing this. Like I mentioned, you're grabbing a load of offense, and we're continuing to grab offense even into the end game. And like I mentioned, it looks like I'm going to be saving time. Trust me, I will not be saving time. You'll see it be lost later, probably. The third birthday exists, and it's... I have a VOD on YouTube, I think. I actually got world record on that recently, but then I couldn't upload my video to YouTube because it copyright struck it. Probably because I had the shower scene. <laughs> I tried, chat. I tried. Anyway, like I mentioned, I am not actually saving a minute. I am losing a lot more time. You have now entered hell. The sewers is hell. You have one mandatory fights and up to... Three or four optional fights. There are four, uh, three optional fights. One mandatory. Now, if you get hit with sonar, you are now blinded and cannot attack. What I do is I go up and then I go down. This will dodge most of the attacks. And then I try to make sure I avoid the sonar and I try to take out the bats that are more in proximity to me. The more bats you kill, the better off you'll be. I got hit by it. What does that mean? It means you want to start using energy shot on a bat. So pick a bat. Pick your favorite bat. This is where energy shot is okay. Blindness means you can only hit things at point blank range, or not at all. Energy shot will bypass this. So the strategy now is you need to get right on a bat's ass, and you need to start shooting. Like that. You get three cure Ds. These will help you later, potentially. They're going to be good for you. And now, we also have an upgrade right here to the left on the screen. And now begins hell. So feel free to use your upgrades and do a little bit of inventory management. Um, get rid of some of your stuff. Make sure you keep at least one to two cure Ds. And uh, let's level up as well, because I know I have that. Also with the sword. Okay. 
I have the chance for three refights. There's three, there's one refight. I can get a frog or a bat, I got bats. Once again, the strategy tends to be go one way, run down, and then go the other way. This usually confuse the bats, which is very good. So, I got a refight here, which is bad. Cure D's, yeah, that cures, uh, I think it's called Darkness is the official stat name. Taking more Cure D's is okay, by the way. I've played the third birthday, it's bad. It has issues, I've played it. I've played worse games, but it's also pretty bad. I skipped a refight right there. That is the worst fight in the game that you do not have to take. It is two snakes and two bats. Poison and blindness is a horrible combination. This one can also be bad. Now, if you get a frog, that's a good refight. You actually kind of like that. But bats are bad. I got one extra fight, and I skipped two fights. That's actually not bad for a sewer. I'll take that. Okay. Now, what's going to be happening is we are going to be going into the subway. Uh, we're mostly done with the sewers. Uh, we do have still a little bit to do. There's going to be one more fight before we kind of go into mostly just, like, puzzles and stuff. How does Sonar blind you? Very carefully. This bat's not a bad fight. Uh, we're going to be having on the lower part of the bridge. The reason why, one, sometimes he just won't hit you with the sonar, which is good. Two, if he hits you with the sonar, you can just ener energy shot him and he'll die. Alright, he's dead. Alrighty, and now I probably could have skipped that cure D, but that's not the end of the world because I can delete it once I go to my mass deletion. We have now finished all the fights in the sewers, and we're going to be hitting one of the toughest bosses in the game. Day 5, Centipede. The centipede's at that last moment before your guns are fully at their capacity, and you're kind of in a weird area where... It can go really wrong. I wish I had a revive. Uh, unfortunately, I do not. Luckily, I think I have plenty of health, also I was going to talk so. But, having a revive here would be good. Um, you want to make sure you keep at least one to two cure Ds before going into the centipede, because the centipede can blind you. Now, the reason why the centipede is tough, and this is where abilities are going to come in. We talked about earlier something called haste. Haste will be your friend. Haste will be your best friend in a moment here. Haste is very good against the centipede, and the centipede does have a few strats you can do with it, but let's see how we perform. Medicine 3 is in that box. I always recommend grabbing it. It's right there. I hear pawing at my door. My dog might be outside my room. I'm not sure how he got there, but he is there. He's trying to break in, chat. He's trying to break in. I don't have enough time to let him in, unfortunately. He'll have to wait. All right, so for this, what I recommend doing is mash until you see um, the menu. And once you see the menu, go to pump two. Now, just mash. What's our part of the speed run? Uh, centipede. Day five as a whole, really. Okay, so that solves this puzzle. You kind of break through that, and now you have a bridge. And as well, you're going to be turning this back off. We're also going to be grabbing the extra ammo right here. Oh, yeah. Don't mind the time loss. It's okay. Uh, this is kind of... Like I mentioned, I'm going to start losing time because I didn't have the micro Uzi. A lot of the time loss I'll be having is due to either additional fights or the fact that I do not have a weapon that's just better. The micro Uzi time will really add up as we continue to move. Alrighty, now we are in the subway. The subway is a very fast split because it is just making your way to the centipede fight. You're going to start by going up here and you're getting uh, one to two items. You always want to grab the health up there. If you want extra range, you can get it right here. This will give you medicine. You need medicine. Micro Uzi, I, I don't know. I think it's like, it used to be a few minutes, but it might be less now with the hammer route. Either way, you're saving a lot of time off Micro Uzi. So, my cruisy will always be better. If you have it, it's worth going. It used to be minutes, but some of that has been diminished. There we go. Okay, we're now going to be grabbing this chest. Once you grab this chest, you'll begin to inventory. Now, what do you do? One, make sure you are healed. A lot. Okay, heal the fool. I don't know for haste, though. Get rid of all cure Ds except for one. And get rid of the cure P if you have that. Uh, level up if you have it. If you don't have that's okay. And sort. And reload. 
world record does not require micro Uzi, but depending on the run type runner you are, it'll probably save you a lot of time. World record is currently M10 though. Centipede, you want to use haste as soon as possible if you have it. If you don't have it, that's okay. Make sure that you dodge the poison airstrike. If you get hit, it's not the end of the world. Uh, once again, pause buffering will be your friend. Now I should have enough for haste, and I can use it. And now we're going to be hasting. Now the thing is, phase one is easy. He is a centipede. Uh, if he does the lightning attack, that might blind you. Once he splits, you want to hold your attack. Oh, here we go. You want to attack right when they split. So what that does is it lets me kill one immediately. Next. What you can do as well is once you have enough for a charge shot, you may charge shot one of the mid sections. However, I'm getting really good damage right now. So you don't have to entirely do that. As well, definitely watch your health. If you ever revive, you don't need to as much. Alright, this is good. I'm not need to. Good, good, that's good. Alright, this has been a really good fight. Once you have here, you're all good. Remember, you can reduce the RNG by using a charge shot. That is okay. Alright, that was a really good fight for me. If you don't get that, that is okay. Now, upgrades, upgrades, upgrades. What you're going to be doing is, one, go to your tool. You're putting all your stats. Uh, you're putting the M79 stats into the M10. If you did not get the Micro Uzi, you're not doing the frost damage. You're putting all your stats into active time. So once again, allow me to repeat, also if you got any upgrades, you'll now be using them on whatever you have, and heal. There we go. Nice Okagi, okay, very nice. Let me explain this once again, because that was fast. Now we're running, I can explain. If you got the Micro Uzi, you're taking the Frost Shot from that gun you just picked up from the Centipede. Keep the M10 and Micro Uzi, you're holding onto those guns. If you have the M10, you are stealing stats from that gun. You can't make use of the, of the Frost Shot. So if you're wondering, hey, why did this run have frost bullets? They got the micro Uzi. Now will be the disc swap on the screen. Once you get the screen, hold down your button and you are going to be swapping discs. Uh, this is the time you'll be opening your console and putting that in there. Is there a best gun? Yeah, it's called the micro Uzi. I mean, we trade guns later, but micro Uzi will be the gun in your friend. That was a very good fight, Tells you King Soul Rack. Uh, the general idea to make that fight easier, I want to mention this once again. That first time you saw me kind of buffer my button like three times. Yeah. The first buffer allowed me to kill one of the enemy parts immediately because I shot it while I was in range. With a force spread, it's really hard to hit them. You want to get two body parts out immediately. Make sure those body parts are not totally separate. Also, at this point, it's funny, uh, this fight is actually a refight, as you may imagine. So that's kind of rough. PSTV, correct. We're almost done with the subway, and we're the subway, and we're gonna be going on to the museum, which will be the bulk of day five. Now, the museum can be a brutal section if you do not know what you are doing. It can be an absolutely brutal section. That's one King Solrak. That's one Canadian. PSTV and PSP are equal speeds. Uh, you can really do either one. World record right now is on PSTV. But a PSP is also just as fast. Actually, it's faster, technically. I'm not going to become Bayonetta. Bayonetta. That, that's weird. Don't do that. Don't, don't do that. that. That's really weird. Okay. So. Why does the museum suck? There's a lot of fights that can go very wrong. There's a lot of fights that can go very bad. So just food for thought on that. The first fight will be the Scorpion. And we fall. I'll turn my dog still outside my room. I'll be okay. The Scorpion, you actually want to use haste pretty quickly. Uh, this is one of the only fights that early on you'll be using haste. There we go. The Scorpion will try to turn towards you. If he's down his side, he won't be able to hit you. This is why haste is good. It allows you to dodge enemies. After this fight, I assure you, it does get a little bit easier. Don't kill me. Thank you. Now, let's start getting a lot of uh, stuff in general. Also, let's heal because I'd rather be safe. I don't want to lose this run after all this time. 
That's kind of the fun part right now. You can lose a little run to a lot of time. Also, now begins the fight with dinosaurs. The general idea, big dinosaurs give good stuff. These green guys give trash. So if you ever have the green guys, pretty much you don't want their items. They're almost never going to give you anything worth it. You're starting off though, their medicines can be helpful. So I'll take their ammo and medicine right now. And now we get dinosaurs. We're also going to be having a lot of weird menuing come up. As well, you can have refights. And just the, yeah, the general concept of getting lost. The museum, I think, is where most runners tend to struggle here. Now, if you're wondering why do these green guys drop trash, they tend to be weaker enemies and they're really easy to deal with. They hop around and you just sort of ignore them. Save all junk. They're essentially birds. They're birds without wings. Alright, funny enough, once you enter this room, immediately go left. That is the actual strategy. Uh, for some reason, this room gives you a fight that you have to do. And for this one, the only way to activate the fight is by leaving the room. I think the game wants you to like look around and like hear noises and then you take a fight. So, here we go. And now, you get the armadillos. These guys hit like a truck, but they're super telegraphed, and they're probably very easy to dodge. They're more annoying than anything. The way you dodge them, go slightly in a different direction. They are immensely easy to avoid. Also, this is where Quick Draw comes in handy. Like I mentioned... Hold on. You will always go first on Quick Draw, meaning you can get more damage out. Which is faster. Going first every turn has a lot of handiness in that. Oh, so these guys drop great loot. They do like little roly poly bugs. Also, I want to mention once again, if you're having trouble with the routing, I highly recommend checking out the uh, guide on speedrun.com. It will tell you pretty much the movement for every room, what to grab, what to do, what to tool management. It will tell you everything in the finer details. I'm trying to explain most of it, but obviously I'm not going to say, oh, go up here, go right here. There's no honesty, that's kind of just repeating yourself to a degree that doesn't really need to be repeated. And it's kind of assumed that you might have a general idea of what's happening if you're trying to learn a game like this. I should really reiterate, if you want to learn any game, the best thing you can do for learning a game, please play it casually. Don't blindly learn games. It's not a good move. It's never a good move. Uh, you're not going to quite understand what's going on, and the routing will be hell. You want some understanding of the game that you're learning. Alrighty, I'm actually kind of low on health. I'm kind of hoping one of these guys will heal me if they hit me. There we go, thank you. Also, for some fights, you may use haste, you may use energy shot. Uh, for most, I find you don't need it, uh, at least, like, you know, outside of, I'd say, pterodactyls and scorpions. Uh, those are really the fights I would say that kind of add up to that whole thing. Yeah, running games without having any without having any foresight is not the move. Um, unless you're very specifically trying to do something, uh, I do not recommend it. Also, let's do this. There we go. Also, you may notice I am moving in certain patterns and certain directions. Uh, the reason why I'm not telegraphing every single fight in the game outside of the bare minimum, outside of telling you, hey, these guys will try rolling into you. Enemies will never act the same between two runs. So, that guy is not always going to roll up. Sometimes he'll roll left, sometimes he'll roll right. It's all based on how you're moving, you know, it's all based on how you're playing. So you can't really telegraph, oh yeah, just do this, 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 because that's not really a way this game can go. Also, for some of these fights, if you are feeling like haste can help you, use haste. Haste is your friend for quite a lot of this run. And you have the PE to use it as well. I generally think the more enemies you have, the more worth it haste is. The general idea, though, is if your haste like doesn't run out during the fight, that's not a good fight. Also, we can skip that one. That's the best way I can put it. If your haste won't run out for the fight, why would you use it? Because then you're just kind of bleeding into things you don't need to bleed into. Anyway, here is a new enemy. He is the Pterodactyl. The P in it. I know it's pronounced pterodactyl, but I'm stupid. 
The pterodactyl will take two turns to kill, possibly more. And his attacks can go into a swipe. You stay kind of underneath him, that's the general idea. Uh, you can shoot this green stuff at you, which is bad, and he can also try to explode you. Um, if he explodes you, that's where blindness can come in. That's why it's kind of recommended to keep one. So always have one Cure D on you. Cure Ds are still going to be helpful even at this point in the game. The mitochond Mitochondactyl. Perfect. The Mitochondactyl. Perfect. But terrifying. Exactly. This is another good example of a fight that I would say haste is probably good for. No, not gene heal haste. Also, as with any RPG, learn the menuing. Also, Killer Kowalski, thank you for Prime Gaming. I do enjoy the emotes and the scissors. Welcome to the swarm. Hope you have a great day today. Hope you are doing well. The general idea is the more enemies you have, the more likely you want to use haste. It's going to be a case-by-case -case situation, though. Let's all that. And at this point, I said to level up, I'm actually going to take a moment to start putting stats into attack. So, fun fact about the centipede. You may have been wondering, hey, you haven't leveled up in a while. Also, let's start using some of our lesser medicines. I need to start making room. Making room is very important. Here's the thing. You can get more fights in this museum part. They'll mainly happen later uh, when we re-enter areas. But, you're going to start getting rid of your lesser medicines if you whenever you level up. Uh, also, level up now, we're no longer doing active time. Our active time is going to be good enough, we're not going to worry. We're now going to be putting levels into attack. Your weapon is going to be getting stronger and stronger at this point. You want all damage. You don't need active time anymore. Your active time will be plenty fine. Uh, for the rest of the game and for the final bosses, uh, we're not going to have to worry about that. Everything we'll be doing is very calculated and very planned. I have seen people absolutely struggle with the final bosses. The strategy we have, it is immensely easy. I remember doing this game casually, and like, you know, I spend a bunch of time trying to level up and all that. Uh, Speedrunning this game is so much easier for the end game. Like, it is way easier when you know what tools you're having and what you're doing. Also, and I hope you're having a genuinely good day, Killer Kowalski. Hope you're doing good. I, I know I gave him a whole spiel, but I also like to say that I hope you're doing good. I hope you're all doing good today, chat. It's not time yet for vibes, but I hope that you're all doing good. So, refights can happen, namely in the part of the run where we're going to be heading back to Clamp's office. As well, we're going to be hitting harder and harder for each area. Go. All right, should be dead now. Also, that's a good example right there. I don't really care about the uh, healing. I don't really care about the um, pickup. I don't need to worry about canceling it because those are big dinosaurs. As a big ghost. This fight in particular is weird. It is a scorpion and a raptor. Haste as soon as you can. Scorpion can be absolutely lethal to you if you're not careful. I recommend uh, st uh, staying closer to the scorpion if you can. Um, ooh, this is rough. Hold on. You do not want this guy hitting you. Thank you. He actually hit me and healed me just right. He can also poison you, funny enough. Uh, this is a bit of a rough fight, not the end of the world. And then we want to end up on the upper side. And you'll see, Cloud, you'll see. You level whenever you go to your menu. Um, you don't really want, like, it's kind of, like, more of a you gotta feel it sort of thing. It's not like, oh, menu, like, level up here. Like, I'd say definitely level up before you get into that fight, because it'll definitely help you more. But it's not, like, an exact science. Normally, you just want to bundle your menus together, as with a lot of games. Uh, if you can save time on menuing, that is good. For instance, you want to make sure that you have uh, open inventory going into this room. Because inside this tent, we're going to be grabbing... Tool. There's also a defense one if you want it. I'm greedy. I took it. You don't need it. There's two items in there. Um, it might help me in the late games. That's why I'm grabbing it. But you need that tool. Make sure you have the tool and make sure you have inventory for it. Uh, this fight can be randomized on uh, what you get. Uh, you will always get armadillos to some degree. Keep in mind, by the way, someone's going to say, Those aren't armadillos. Those are something yada yada yada. Call enemies whatever you want them to call them. It doesn't really matter. 
Oh, my dog's barking now, but he's barking, chat. He's barking. I don't know how he got upstairs, though. He's like, the gate, like, firmly closed behind me. But he doesn't go upstairs. I wonder what happened to my brother, though. Now, that's the question. Good news, though. If you tend to be in this hallway, you're pretty far in the game, and you likely won't be having any issues. There we go. We're gonna be using a haste in this upcoming fight, because it's gonna be a little bit longer. It'll be a pterodactyl, and it'll be two dinosaurs. There they are. Like I mentioned, long fights, haste. Short fights, don't haste. I could have hasted in that last fight, actually. It would have been a big deal. I probably won't... Oh, I got the... Oh, there it is. Wow, that's beautiful. Do I still have a cure D? I do not. Wow, I am terrible. Anyway, we're gonna do energy shot on, uh, let's say this guy. This is why cure Ds are nice to have. Remember I deleted my cure D when I said you should always keep one on hand? Now we're good. There we go. There we go, now we're back in business. That is a rare attack, but it can happen to you. It's okay if it does. It's minor time loss. Alrighty. I'm now level 30, so I leveled up. Now, I bet you're wondering, hey, are you going to level up? I will, at some point. Like I mentioned, a lot of what I want to do is very, very tactical. I want to combine my menus if I can, because we'll be hitting some things soon. As well, I want certain ammo or certain item management at certain points. First things first, grab this item on the left. This is going to be a machine gun you'll use for later. You need to do this in order to open a door. And last but not least, go right and hold down. There'll be an invisible elevator in this room. This elevator is going to have a very strong gun. Go to the fourth floor. Uh, there are going to be two items, a tool and a gun. You need this gun. It is super important to have it. So, first thing first, box. You get a tool. Other box. You now get the gun. M500. That M500 will be immensely important. Uh, you need that, and along with other guns. We're going back down to the second floor now. Eyes in Fog and Shadow. Also, now we are hitting the area to refight. Once again, once we're here, you're going to be holding up and then left. Uh, that's going to push you around here. And then you can head back down. We are now hitting the era of refights. I have to go back to that first hallway where I fought the scorpion and the raptor. And yeah, I'll be doing good. How's it going, Shadow Car? I'll be fighting the scorpion. No, not, I won't be fighting them. But I'll be going back to that room with the scorpion and the raptor. Every fight on the way back can give me a refight. Now, if you're wondering, where are you going to level up? I'll be leveling up right before I go into a cutscene room. Uh, the cutscene room is going to potentially have, uh, what's the word? I'll have some things. Some stuff. And we'll have two items that I need to get. And I need to have inventory for those two items. So, I want to make sure my inventory is good, and I want to make sure that my level up is good. Because I am putting every level up into damage. Now, if you're going to the menu much more, you may as well level up and check if you have it sometimes. It's okay to check that. Um, I do mash through it on the experience level up, so that's how it goes. And you'll be seeing a lot of stuff with this game. Let's go. Now begins the refighting. Let's see how many we get, if any. Also, this is going to be the point where leveling up is going to be super important. I'm definitely not going to be under-leveled. I'll tell you that much right now. If anything, I'm going to be vastly over-leveled. I got very unlucky with this run. This one actually kind of ended up being really bad in the late game, unfortunately. Also, this fight's actually one of my least favorite fights in the game. Uh, mainly because this hallway is really large, and it doesn't need to be. So clumping up these dudes tends to be an absolute pain, and I am not a fan of it. Alright, it's done. How are you roll into me? There we go. Oh, you're not dead. Now you're dead. They're interesting. Hopefully I won't get too many more refights. Hopefully. Oh god, I hate this section. I've gotten every refight that I can get. Every single refight that I can get, I have gotten. That is wonderful. Alright, and now we are heading into this office. 
before I go into the office, what's going to happen is we are going to level up more of our damage. Uh, we are going to make sure all our stuff is good. And uh, let's see our eye inventory. We are pretty good. Let's go to that. Let's use that. And let's use a couple of these medicine twos. That sounds pretty rough, uh, Danny, too. I hope you'll be okay. Oh, you're saying you, you did do it. I see. So, this will be dialogue mashing. If you're wondering why am I losing time, micro Uzi, and unlucky refighting. My PB in this recently did not have a lot of refights. However, this is having a lot of refights. Is that bad? It just sort of is the situation. How many runs have been played today? Uh, this is my second actual run. I have done two att three attempts total. This is my second attempt. And the first attempt made it all the way to the spider. Or made it all the way to the Chinatown, I think. Yeah, Chinatown. So this is my second time in day five today. Uh, like I said, losing time, it does happen. Um, can this PB? Maybe. I don't actually know. We're continuing it out of the way because this is commentated and it's actually a really good commentary. I don't I don't mind this one. This one's been very fun. Now, obviously, you know, it could have gone better, but also I kind of got unlucky on some parts. And, uh, you know, I ate some deaths I didn't have to eat. I got unlucky on some parts. I got greedy. Uh, it just sort of the situation speed running at hand. Plus, you get to see the power of the micro Uzi. And like I said, that monitor would have time loss. And it's kind of funny because a lot of the RNG really does just boil down to certain things. And it's not even really the micro Uzi. Like, you can kind of tell I had, th like, how many additional fights. I think every refight this game could have thrown at me, it threw at me. So we'll see how that ultimately deals out. But I do also want to add the idea that I also ended up getting some really good damage. And once you get late game, you'll probably see me save some weird time save, because I am going to be just riddled with the damage. I have a lot more than I traditionally would have. I'm just not getting a lot of hits. So let's see. But for anyone asking, because uh, I know I got asked a few times earlier, how much time does the micro Uzi lose? This is a good example of what can happen. It can. My PV was a micro Uzi with the hammer out. Alrighty. So, we have another chance at a refight, and I am absolutely going to guess that I'm getting that refight. Would anyone like to play a game? Let's see, do I get a refight? Yes or no? I'm guessing yes. Knowing how this game has gone, I'm guessing we're going to get it. Anyway, we're now heading over to the boss rush. Um, from this point on, uh, most of the enemies are going to be rather straightforward. Here's your first refight. I'm not surprised. Also, I got blinded during one of the fights. Not only is it a refight, it was a bad refight. Most people like my voice, what do you mean? Most viewers like my voice, to my knowledge. I could be wrong, though. I'm glad you enjoy it, though. Also, Pastelicon ca Cafe, thank you very much for the Tier 1. Enjoy the emotes and the scissors, and thank you. I mean, some people don't, but that's just general YouTube complaining, which doesn't happen too often. To my knowledge, I've only heard some people, though, but most do. This is the worst I can possibly have. I hate this pterodactyl so much. There we are, we're back in business. I hate this guy so much, by the way. This guy is terrible. See what a refight is again? That's what I've been getting this entire run. Yeah, there's like one person on the GDQ panel who didn't like my voice, I don't know why. But even then, I was still a host anyway, so it didn't really matter all that much. Alright, so now that I've done every single refight, guess what? After the store, we're hitting the boss. So I lost about three minutes due to refights. This will happen. This is the RNG. The upside is I won't be under leveled. Now, where do I split? I split once I enter the t uh, Triceratops fight. Triceratops is a fun fight. So one, make sure you're leveled up. Make sure you're loaded. And make sure you're healed. All right, we're looking good. So let's now enter this fight. I lost about four minutes from refights. 
four minutes from refights. This can happen to you. Uh, like I mentioned, I won't be underleveled. But I am absolutely overleveled. Refights or whenever you get a fight, you don't need to take. Okay, so the way it's going to work is you want to activate haste pretty much immediately. You want to break his skull. Uh, you might not even need to use an energy shot. This guy will have two attacks, lightning and ramming. Um, you usually do a lightning early, and then after enough damage, he'll begin to ram. Now, be very careful of his ram. It will do, like, 200 damage. It's actually better to try to dodge it if you can. You can actually go into haste once again. So be very careful of the ram. Uh, once the skull breaks off, it should just be a few more shots and you're done. In fact, you might be able to energy shot him right now, and that'll be good. And alternatively, you can also do an energy shot early and try to break the shell. Uh, really, it's runner preference. It's usually good to use one energy shot, though. Alright, and he is down. Uh, he leveled me up to level 32, by the way. So, what you're going to do is go down. Don't worry about healing. Because... He rams you. What that ram does is that's going to heal me to full. I know you're thinking, wait, that healed me? Yes. I don't know why. I guess I have Braille likes being rammed, which I have learned from the Parasite Eve art. That is absolutely true. At least there's some Parasite Eve art there that uh, dictates that. All right, loot both of these things. If you're feeling good on health, you don't need both. Also, I recommend, you know, the more in damage. Alrighty, and once again, you can then do that. Alright, you are now entering the T-Rex. If you're feeling confident you don't need it, you don't have to do it. But, this run's been going as good as you can expect. T-Rex fight, how is this going to go? Well, you want to use haste quickly if you can get it. Otherwise, just attack. After you use haste, stay by his right foot. His right foot. Not the right side, the right foot. Which, I guess, is the right side, but still. What that'll do is that'll also cause the fire to go to the right, and you can pretty much stand here and dodge it, and then you go back to the right side. Uh, the right foot is the most important foot to stick by. Once you can do haste, do haste. Uh, normally, you would level up to 32 after this fight, by the way. Be careful getting hit by this, by the way, because this can keep hitting you entirely like that, and it can actually one-shot you if you're not careful. That's why you want to stay by the right foot. I dodge that. That's good. It's a miss. And he should be dead soon. He tried to chomp me. That's okay. Uh, he healed me. That's actually really good. No, no. He did the space attack. Alright, now he's dead. Loot everything from him. I'm currently level 33. I'm over leveled. I don't have to worry about a refight. Ideally, what you would want is you would want to level up on one last fight coming up, and I'll explain what fight that is. Also, there's a very good chance to get refights. Now, you're upgrading everything. If you have a level, do it. If you have your M10 or whatever weapon you have, that's going to be going into the M8000. All your stats go into the M8000. You're now taking the burst from the M500 and you're going into the M8000. All your stuff goes into that. You're now going to be using the M8000 for the rest of the run. This is going to be your best friend. Looks like I'm by the left foot, though. I go to the left foot. So, the dodge on the fire attack. Good eye. What you want to do is you want to be on the right foot start, go to the middle, and then go to the left foot. That will allow you to get the dodge each time, but it only works if I'm starting by his right foot. So start by his right foot, go to his left foot. Also, you guessed it, refight city. Do I get refights? Let's see. Ideally, you would want none at this point. Hey! So, you might be wondering, what level do I want to be? You want to be level 30. Actually, I just... Well, I gotta refight. You want to be level 32, and you want to be ready to level up. By the next fight, by the next boss fight, you want to be level 33. 33 is the magic number here. You can also see burst already in action. I'm back to choosing my target, and now I can do damage to multiple enemies. If you are not leveled up by this fight or by, you know, your certain XP away, it should be in the guide, you can take a fight up above. 
ideally though, you want to be the level you need without having to do refights. As you can tell, refights are bad, and you don't want to take them. The fight in general that you want to level up on is coming up right here. Now, why do you want to be level 33? Why 33? 33 is going to give you an ability called Liberate. Also, if you're wondering, how can I check my level? Go to your inventory. It should tell you what level you are. I'll, tell you, I'll show you right after this cutscene. Level 33 gives you Liberate, which is what we've been aiming for. Liberate makes the end game a breeze. If you don't have Liberate, you will be SOL. It is one of the hardest fights in the game coming up. Right now, I'm level 33. What will normally happen is you will be right about to level on this fight right here. This is the ideal management. So, this is why I was mentioning, like, at the same time, while you do want refights, you also don't want refights. Getting as many as I did is horrible. Like, that is way too many. However, you also can't have zero. Like, you need some. It's a nice ebb and flow. As you can see in my PB, I actually lost straight up a minute from refighting during the section, having being behind on XP. Uh, my PB was very good on not taking extra fights. Um, but I actually needed to level up. Um... Once you enter here, you're going to be entering what I like to call 7 minutes or 10 minutes of mashing. Also, Boss Obscura, the name of the Tier 1. Enjoy the emotes and the scissors, and welcome. Hope you're having a great day. Welcome to the swarm. Okay, chats, so we want to talk about... Also, look! Milkers! We found the mommy milkers! We finally did it! I swear, Mr. YouTube, it's TOS friendly. It's art. She censored them for me. It's not against the rules. Correct. So, now that we have all the resources, the end game will be a breeze. If you did not get Liberate, may God help your soul. You will die. It will be one of the hardest fights in the game coming up if you do not get Liberate. You will get Liberate after Day 5. Day 6 will always have Liberate if you use this route. Day 5, however, has the chance that you don't get Liberate. Eve 2 is the hardest fight in the game without Liberate. With Liberate, it is probably one of the easiest. And that's how powerful that ability is. It is something that you absolutely need. Also, while we spend 10 minutes doing uh, virtually nothing, I'm going to say, if you have not done so yet, follow my Twitter and Instagram and my other social media like TikTok and stuff. Hint, hint, wink, wink. Because we're not doing anything for a bit. You know what I do? I check my phone while mashing X, and I talk to Twitch chat. Why did I just get a message saying E? It just says E. Why do I just have a message saying E? I'm confused. Who is this from? E. Super beginning, super beginner friendly, Boss Obscura. Super. Uh, there is a route on speedrun.com that can teach you how to play the game, and it is immensely easy. It just says E. Maybe they fall asleep? E. Why is the phone not working? Hey, work you. Anyway, this is going to go between cutscenes and not cutscenes. E. No, you can't at me in Discord also saying E. That wasn't capped out, but we're doing good. Everyone's just telling me E. You know what? If you're watching this on YouTube, if you happen to be watching this VOD later on YouTube, type E in the comments if you got this far. E. See, chat's doing it. I like the E meme. What was that one song, by the way? It's the E, like, just the E. And it's like the wild piano song. I like that one. Exactly. Get a shout out to the YouTube people. Anyway, this. No, you can't type it if you're on Twitch. I already read these. I can read these actively. E. So. There we go. Oh, I got added. Why did I get added? Also, there is a save point during this big part. If you feel like you might have trouble with the upcoming fights, you can save. It's okay. It's not against the rules. And you give me a rump down the lore. Just say the word mitochondria yourself a bunch and you have the general idea. There's your rundown. The word mitochondria repeated. There you go. As long as Ephraim. I 
How do you notice a lot about the Parasite E for some reason? I don't know why. Realistically, it's police deal with mitochondria. Just say mitochondria a bunch. I found the deep lore, woman chugs semen, and gives birth to baby, and then you kill baby. And also mitochondria. There's your lore. That is actually the plot? It is actually the plot, that's correct. E. Like, for real? Yep, that is the actual plot of this game. That's just how it goes. And, like I mentioned, this is just a lot of mashing. You have cutscene, you have mashing. Cutscene, mashing. So you have a good time to relax and chill, so to speak. There you go. Ah, this one go by Blue Sky, everything good. Ghostbusters 2. Also, if anyone's wondering why the helicopter's exploding, the people inside are exploding, and that blows it up. Probably a bunch of kawaii kawaii fish. I don't even want to count it. Way too many. Much too many for me. At least three. You know, I'm gonna check Instagram. I got in top ten. I'm currently top eight. I've been top ten. Let's check Instagram. I... To see things. Hmm. 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 Yep. I'm not bad at this game. 72? That's a lot of mitochondrias. Yay! Two people followed me on Instagram. That's what's up. I got the good likes, not the bad likes. Also, wait, how many likes do I got my post? Yay, I got like 80. I feel good. I've heard about that. I know Paul McCartney. I've been told that, actually. Is my goal top 5? Yeah, we can still try to get top 5. I think I can get it. I mean, obviously this run's not going to get it, but also this is a commentated run that I went uh, a bit safer on in some parts and a bit ballsier on others. Um, so my main goal for this one is commentary. I should add as well, keep in mind, speedrunning will never go quite the way you think it is, as life will never go quite the way that you think it does. You must adapt. So, whenever I do these, I like doing them without, like, like very often whenever I do these live, you know, we're watching right now, chat, people will come in and ask me, Dysis, why are you currently behind by three minutes? Because I got three minutes of refighting. That's it. There is nothing I could have done about that. I had three minutes of refighting. What do you do about that to beat that? Do another run. You have to adapt. Adapting is super important. You adapt or you die with many things in life. So, I know speedrunning is rather uh, an arbitrary online scaling of competing in games that realistically, you know, weren't meant to be competitive. But it's a kind of a nice, neat playthrough of games, and it's kind of just a nice thing to think about. And hey, it looks like a final boss, doesn't it? For me, it's a good way of exploring these games again. Also, uh, me getting a lot of positive reception on these types of runs have been very nice. Uh, I want to mention, like, you know, on YouTube, I've been getting a lot of nice comments, so I want to thank anyone who's been doing those. Um, people on the Twitch side, those of you watching right now, I get a lot of nice comments from you, Jack. You guys as well. A lot of you I know notice get a lot cozier during these, as I'm kind of on my own mental spew of words, especially while these are going. And it will be with the ghosts. A lot of goo in the trout population. So, and also, I can't help but notice that, uh, uh, I'm just gonna say on the Twitch end of things, uh, the view count fucking jumped since I started this run. Like, it fucking leaped since the beginning of this run. I just wanna say this right now. Like, um, these are fun for me to do, and I'm glad people like them. So, they're a good way of showcasing how a run might go. Also, I think one thing that is a bit unique to the way I do these is very often I will see people, uh, I see a lot of good explained videos on YouTube. However, not a lot of them will encounter things that might happen to you. Not a lot of them will encounter what you will personally see. It's always, hey, here's world record and here's me explaining everything in world record. You don't see, 
Here's me doing a run live for you, explaining the hiccups and what happened during that run live. Possibly because most people can't really talk a mile a minute about uh, things like this uh, off the top of their head. But it works out here. And it is assisted. You know, also the new normal, apparently everyone in Discord playing TFT. Uh, my brother told me he found like a bunch of people uh, on the friends list playing TFT lately, so. A lot of people have been doing TFT in the Discord, just saying that. <laughs> I think that became the new game after Dead by Daylight. I'm out of water. Oh. It happens. It happens. Yeah, that is something to consider, though. Also, this is good marathon commentary practice. I know a lot of people, um, they wonder how to do marathon commentary. Generally, the weirdest part about marathon commentary is, I think, too much focus on plots. Uh, I'm gonna say that as we're going. They may notice, oh, why are you talking about this section? It's obvious. You have, they're killing the mitochondria. That, that's it. It's not a super detailed lore playthrough. I'm assuming if you looked up a Parasite Eve video, you're probably, you know, mildly aware of Parasite Eve to some degree. Or you understand that this is an RPG or a game that has, act, you know, a lot of that stuff going on. The story doesn't quite matter, and you're seeing a lot of what goes on. You're trying to kill the mitochondria. It boils down to that. But very often, I'll see people try to explain some of the details that I don't really need to explain to me. Tell me why you're run why are you speedrunning this game? Why is it cool? Tell me that. I'd much rather hear that very often. Brief thing about the game, and then about commentary speaking of commentary we're now entering the e-fight you should be full on everything however if you're not do make sure you are now if you're level 32 you're in for hell if you're level 33 you're good so phase one will be making use of haste haste is immensely important here also you may have remembered we upgraded our gun we're now on the m8000 with a burst upgrade the burst upgrade is going to be why this fight's going to be so easy so, uh, Eve here, uh, this is the final E4, uh, one of the final Eve fights. She has three body parts you must kill, I think. Three or four. Killing these is hard. Really hard. However, it's not so hard when I'm doing damage to all of them at once. Instead of having to aim at four things, I am aiming at one thing. And hitting four things. Also, I have taken all my damage throughout the game that I've been pouring into this gun, and now I'm going to be able to bust Eve like she's going, you know, uh, something... I was going to make a pregnancy joke, because, you know, you had to bust in her to get pregnancy, but I think she kind of just chugged it with human essence, so, uh... If someone wants to fill in the blank for me there, you can do that one. <laughs> anyway, on to the fight. Once the fight begins, the first thing I'll be doing is haste. In addition, I get an attack after haste because this game allows me to do that. Now what's important is if you get this attack, you can just dodge in between, and we're gonna be going haste immediately, and that'll also let me shoot. This this is why this kind of gun's nice, because not only do I get haste, I also get actions. You kind of want to stay away from that hand in the middle. That hand is very grabby. Uh, it also sweeps, so to be careful. Uh, any attack that's not a grab is a good attack. Uh, you want to make sure that you are just having haste on at all times, just so you do not get grabbed. The only way you'll grab that hand is with haste. If you, get, if you get grabbed, it's not the end of the world. She shouldn't do enough damage to outright kill you. And you also, you'll be able to heal, which is good. I want you to hear these oomphs. That's what you want. All right, phase one is now down. Phase two will be much easier. Like I said, three oomph. Now, phase two. Also, I'm playing this very safe because I feel like I'm low on resources. I don't have any medicine for us. So, once we get to the final fights, I'll also be playing this safe. Now, this is where hell will happen. Eve Final Form. If you are not level 33, this fight sucks, because she's running all around, it's a pain. The answer is run around, dodge, and haste. Now, since we are level 33, here's what happens. One, two. One, two. And what we're going to do now is liberate and gg we have now won the fight is done uh if it's not done now one more bullet ought to do it you may need one more shot but it's going to be two rounds of shots and then one liberate uh ideally if you got a crit you'll be fine otherwise one more shot afterward ought to do it looks like we got it and that is Eve 2, our Eve final form. We're now done with Eve. Eve is now dead, and Liberate is your best friend. This is why Liberate is so good. If you're level 33, one of the easiest fights in the game. 
Uh, he made, uh, that was faster than any other fight that we've done uh, outside of maybe the first fight. Um, what's normally a hard fight gets very trivial, and this is going to happen a lot with the final form. However, like I mentioned, I'm a bit nervous for the final boss fight, uh, just because I noticed uh, when I did automatically heal, it didn't give me a full heal. It gave me a pretty weak heal, so I don't think I have enough medicine fours uh, to my liking. Uh, if you are low on health and ammo, you do have a chance to get more before the very end. I will say, if you're this far into the game, you are very close to beating the whole game and being a Parasite Eve speedrunner. Also, yes, the booba has melted. I am sorry for anyone in chats who was wanting the booba. It's gone now. No worries, I can gosh. Hope you had a good stream. What are you doing today? Tell me all about it. Not sure why it didn't pop up, but it do be like that sometimes. Tell me all about it. Which is weird, because I see it works in uh, reliever stream. It doesn't work here. I'm not sure why that is. Alright, now you are on the boat. Uh, this is the shortest day of the game. Uh, day 6 is going to be very straightforward and very simple. The idea here is you're going to go on the boat and you're going to be doing a brief conversation. If you are low on health, what you can do next is you are able to talk to the guy on the left. The guy on the left can give you health and ammo and other resources. Uh, all you really care about is the health 4s and the health 3s and the ammo if you need it. They also be talking to the guy here. Uh, once you match the dialogue, just match cancel. Not my Ada, but the you know the guy above you. He'll try to name your guns. You don't need to name your guns. You can just skip that. Uh, the guy by the door though will be your friend. And also, if you're feeling a bit risky on this whole thing, you can save the game here. This is the last spot you'll have to save the game. There we go. Uh, that's fine. Uh, I just name it C. All right, cool. We're good. I don't know why I did that for me. That's fine. We're gonna be taking health and ammo because I do not trust this game not to peel me. I'll just play it very safe. Medicine threes and ammo. Okay. Uh, now, make sure you're all good. You don't need to do anything else for the rest of the game. Just go outside and begin for the final boss. Final boss will always go the same. I do lose some time for that, but I recommend sa yeah, saving if this is your first time. If you do not save the game, you will have to beat five fights in a row. These fights are hard, but if you follow the route so far, they won't be very hard for you. Just do understand they will have some trouble. It is very difficult to do this first try. Uh, I remember doing this casually. I think it took me literally an entire night to beat this. Also, I see the Peepo leaves because the Booba is gone. We're not going to be fighting the ultimate being, which this is the whole crux of the game. Remember how I mentioned earlier that woman chugs semen? Uh, she's doing it to make a baby. It's funny because earlier I called it baby batter so I could avoid the manga TOS, but I'm just calling it outright semen. You know the you know TikTok bans the word or mutes the word cock and balls? I didn't know that. Now I know that. I'm, I'm just doing that as a, a difference there. I tried uploading a thing on TikTok and uh, it got muted. Nice. Tragic? Absolutely tragic. I agree. Absolutely sad shit. It's the saddest story ever told. Baby shoes, never worn. Let's go. Also, it's now time for baby. Can't sleep, it'd be like that sometimes. Exactly, Priya, I agree with you. I agree. Alright, let's go. Now, there's gonna be four unique fights. They're gonna happen very fast. I'll explain each as they go. Uh, and we're going to be using quite a lot of interesting strats here. The general idea is Liberate will kind of be your friend. Sort of. Haste and Liberate, boys, gals, and non-binary pals. Haste and Liberate. Here we go. It's a baby. It's worse than a monster. It's a child. With a giant brain. This is the ultimate being. He's going to evolve very fast into, I guess, what the ultimate being turns into. Also, the Twin Towers are in the background. I'm just kind of dating when this game was made. Okay. So, 
Phase one is mostly easy. You're going to haste, and also, if he ever drops to the ground, try to run into him. You can avoid taking all of your damage in one health. So, once again, you're going to haste. Avoid using liberate. You don't want liberate. How's it going? Uh, is that OL3J? Nice emote, by the way. Bertley? I don't know. Yeah. I had that there for a while, and I just kept it uh, on there. Hold on. Oh, I'm taking the damage. Not the end of the world. Um, you can see why you would want to do that. Uh, it's too far, though. Not the end of the world. He's down. Also, can't mind, because making fun of British people totally counts for that. It's still the case. Keep that in mind. I'm not going to get into the merits of that debate right now, because we're making marathon commentary. Anyway, let's continue. Alright, phase two. You're going to go haste as soon as possible. Now, with hey, also enjoy the music while we go. With haste, you're going to keep going until the body splits. Once the body splits, you'll use Liberate. Uh, right now, like I mentioned, you are doing a lot of damage to both body parts right here. And it should split momentarily. There we go. Once it splits, you will Liberate. Yeah. So yeah, it makes sense. Oh, OL3J. Yeah, if you run to hit the baby while it's doing that big attack, you can avoid the whole hit. Uh, the problem is you have to predict it. And realistically, it won't be the end of the world if you miss it. Especially if you have a revive or a lot of health, which I got more health because I was nervous. I had a feeling something would go wrong. This chick has mitochondria powers. The answer to anything, any question you have at the story, mitochondria. Just keep whispering that to yourself. It'll answer all your questions. Okay, that was actually really good. Liberate did its job just right. All right, that was Ultimate Being 2. We're now entering Ultimate Being 3. Ultimate Being 3 is probably the most fight out of all of them. The goal of Ultimate Being 3 is you're going to shoot it until you can liberate. Once you liberate, you win the fight. Shoot it until you liberate. If you've been doing this right, you shouldn't have to do anything else. Shoot until liberation. Also, this man has a gigantic sausage. Look at it. He's like those guys from South Park who have the bean bags. Keep in mind, this is actually one of the bosses who can definitely kill you from health, so definitely be careful on him. If you must heal, there's no shame in this. Let's go. Let's actually heal, because I don't trust this. I don't trust this. Just in case. Normally you don't have to heal. I heal just in case. Normally you should be fine. And now I can go with Liberation right now. This is rough. Ultimate Being 3 is one of the toughest ones. You can use PE, but you can't use PE. Using your Eve power is fine. However, you need to Liberate. You need to save it for Liberate. You cannot use any of your PE to heal right now. You will ruin the fight. It's not its tail. It's not a tail. It's sausage, baby. All right. Once you liberate, the fight is done for this round. That is good. And you're entering the final round. You are not using PE for anything but haste and liberate right now. This is why you have the CM vest. This is why you grabbed health. Nope. You have to wait it out. That's the only way to do it. You have to wait it out. Alright, so now the final phase, you need to do 20 damage. All your bullets will do 1 damage. But you're wondering, wait, that takes forever. Well, guess what? You grabbed a machine gun earlier, that does a lot of damage. So, if you crit, that can be good. Equip the MP5. And now, fire away. There's a chance you can one cycle this in two turns, and the mutant shark is dead. And now, you will be getting a special weapon. This will be Maeda's gun. You grabbed this earlier in, in your inventory. Maeda's gun will always do 9, 9, 9 damage. 8 shots wins you the fight. In 8 shots, you will have beaten the final boss. In a fight. Also, time for the most badass scene in this game. I hope you enjoy it. This is the best part. And yes, this is why you grabbed the MP5. So this is what we grabbed earlier in the museum. This is in the security room. We don't need it for the gun. We need it for that speed. And here it is. Daniel jumps out of the plane, ignites on fire, 
throws the bullets to Aya, and then puts himself out. Such a badass moment. I love that right there. Alrighty. Now, you can still die, so be careful. Luckily, you probably won't die to grab the extra health. Um, you also might not even get hit, but it's a bit kind of weird to dodge these. They do fire bullets at you like that. So just kind of keep that in mind. You can still die. Four shots wins you the fight. Or eight, eight bullets total. Four rounds of bullets, I should say. And GG. You have now beaten the final boss. However, it is not over yet. You must escape. Oh, I was going to Periphilia. That would be good. Periphilia. There we go. Periphilia. There we go. I know that's in the name. Daniel's not dead. He's based. We're not done yet because it is time for the Bone Zone. Do not save the game. I'll tell you that right now. You must escape. If you die right now, you will lose the entire boss fight and have to go back to round one. So, do not save your game here. Ah, yes, got her magic. The phone will stay out of order and the fish will kill you. Um, you'll always be going the same route, so that is nice. So once again, if you have the map open, you have the guide open. Oh, I mean, I have the guide open for this part very often because this part scares me. The music also amps up every time, so it is going to be very scary. If you follow the guide, you'll have no problem here. Just do be careful not to move the wrong way. Saving is bad right there because if you try to save, I didn't save. I didn't die. I think actually, I think I died, but I didn't say. <laughs> I was too scared. If you go the wrong way while running away, you will die immediately. So just do pay attention to what room you're in. Don't worry about the preload or, you know, the fade-in. If you really are afraid, it is okay. Although, I will say, once you pass this room, it's mostly downs. Also, where you know where we are? Hell's Kitchen. I love that Io waits for the monster to come closer. All right, from this point forward, if you're making it here, it is mostly going to be down, except for the last one. So, just keep holding down until the final one, and then it'll be a left. I just have to wait to deliver the line. It's very important. This part can be absolutely terrifying if you're not careful. Do not go the wrong way. You will die. The fish can catch up to you very quickly. Anyway, time is coming up, and we're almost done. Yeah, I've seen the blindfold in front of this. It is wild. Almost done. Also, this fish can scare you going up these stairs. It is so fast. And after this, once you pass the arch and it fades to black, you are done. I now have a 245-11. GG and a golden. And that is Parasite Eve. If you made it this far, you have now beaten the game. And that's GG. A 245 on a commentator run's not bad. Although, if you're wondering where... Oh, hold on. Check this out. Check this out. Check this out. Hey, Dysis. How did you lose three minutes? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. It just it just sort of happened. It just sort of happened. You made this game for Gario. You can't always get what you want. Exactly, Teddy. This is the issue of this game. Not all runs will be the same. Oh, why didn't you do what World Record does? Because World Record didn't get every refight in existence. And World Record performed better than I did. But you know what? If you followed along, you can probably get a good Parasite Eve time. Because I got a 245. And I think you can too, if you're running this. Anyway, at this point forward, you can watch the ending. So, just mash through and watch your ending. Once you get to the opera, it'll play automatically. You don't have to watch if you don't want to, but you can if you truly want to. I was going to open Outdoorsman and Jason... Is that Jason Akkad? I hope you're doing good. If you're watching this on YouTube as well, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I will be playing out the ending for the VOD, but I will say that if you made it this far, feel free to I don't know, comment on YouTube, like, and subscribe. I feel like that's the YouTube thing to say, and uh, hopefully you'll be watching it over there. And here as well on Twitch. We're doing another run, don't you worry. Hi, I'm new in town. We'll be doing another run. How many endings are there? A good ending and a bad ending. Uh, the speedrun gets one of those endings. I won't tell you which one, but you can take a wild guess. Um, mainly because one of the endings is locked behind something called the Chrysler Building, which is a New Game Plus thing. But yeah, this run is actually really good, all things considered. Uh, I definitely messed up going into the Ultimate Being. Um, I don't mind that too much. And like, 
going like uh, you know for most of the game it was pretty good although i could have done a little bit better like this part wasn't that bad i missed the frog skip but like i mentioned it kind of equalizes on some parts so it all depends on just how it goes the best thing you can do in any speed run continue running it just finish out your runs don't be reset heavy unless you're like literally grinding for world record meaning you actually have a feasible chance not that you want to get world record if you're like top five and you're grinding i get that but if you're like you know 30th place on a 30 person leaderboard maybe don't reset off every run beat a run you'll be doing better trust me all right anyway the ending is i have finally gets to go back to the opera remember the opera that burned down in the beginning of the game they rebuilt it fast don't worry it's already back But yeah, uh, as well, I do want to mention, if you do want a lot of resources, they are on speedrun.com. Uh, it's a very easy game to learn. Uh, they pretty much tell you everything that you need to know in the guide there, uh, if you're wondering about anything. So, you would think, right? Hey, the opera burned down. You want to go back to the opera, everyone? Yeah, sounds like a plan. Same opera. Also, look, Maeda's finally gonna bust the moves on Aya. I know a lot of people want to bust moves on Aya. I've se I've seen the concept art. Tetsuo Nomura, that man wants to bust all over Aya. I guarantee it. I've seen the third birthday. I've sped ran the third birthday. But what happens? The same thing that always happens. He's building up the courage, and then. He's building up that courage for a while. I don't remember building up courage for that long. It takes a while for him to build up that courage. He built it and... Bodied. Or Maeda. Denied. Poor Maeda. Anyway, once Maeda hunks his head down, I don't think you have to do anything else realistically, if I remember correctly. So it's pretty good. And at this point, it goes automatically again. You don't need to mash any more buttons if you want your ending. So we can just kind of enjoy it, which we're watching. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed it, chat. What did you all think of this? I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, he got rejected because of mitochondria. That is exactly why he got rejected. It was the mitochondria. Honestly, as well, I think while this game is long, it's really simple to learn. Hell, how would this run would have been, I'm wondering. Let's see. What would this rank would have been if I submitted this run to the leaderboard? This run wouldn't have been amazing, but mind you, wouldn't have been terrible. Uh, this would have been top 14. Out of about 40 runners. And especially on a no reset with some of the worst extra fights I've seen... I mean, hopefully we'll be able to get a PB soon uh, that beats that one. But for right now, I'm currently top 8. With my 241. I'm doing another run tonight, don't you worry. We're doing another run in a moment here. You can get this route. It's fun. It's easy. Once you get the hang of it. The only issue is, uh, you know... Refights, man. Also, if you don't get that micro Rosie. Yeah, the micro Uzi can really make a difference. Uh, it's kind of like uh, how RE3 has the uh, grenade launcher and the uh, magnum. We're getting grenade launchers and be much better. So one to one's a thing. If, uh, if all you have is original hardware, can be competitive. Yes and no. You'll definitely cap out at a certain point if you're on PS2 or even PS1. Uh, in order to be truly competitive, um, you'll have to have PSTV or PSP. Uh, the best PS2 time appears to be a 251 currently. Uh, you will lose a lot of time to loads, unfortunately. But in theory, that shouldn't entirely stop you at that point. Like, when I started running this game, Mercy Killed, I learned it on a PS2, and then I finally moved over to a PSTV when I was able to acquire one. But also, PSPs are probably a better avenue for that, because PSPs are a bit cheaper. But the problem is the store, so uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a dicey situation. PSTV is definitely a good thing to have, though, if you're wanting to do a lot of PS1 games. It's a good console, but also, if you're buying a console to get a better time, that's definitely a certain investment that you're making with that. But I'll say I started on PS2. I'll definitely start it on PS2. 
Anyway, here's the ending. They all turn into mitochondria monsters. And then Aya's going to become Eve. Ah, how scary. I like this ending. It's fun. It's bold. Oh. Alrighty, and that is Parasite Eve. We did it. Yay. And now I did a three-hour run, and I really need to pee.